Al is hardball. What's he like? Uh, intense. Yeah. As, if I could sum it up in one word, it'd be intense. Really? But, like, he's the type of coach, like, super competitive. Yeah. Like, he works out every day, and, you know, he'll, really? get, he'll probably get multiple <laughs> workouts in a day. Like, he's yeah. always come in early and work out with the strength coach. But then, like, you know, players got your scheduled workout times. He would maybe pop back in to yeah. do a couple sets. He's the, he, like, if you're doing a set with, you know, 45s or whatever, uh -huh. he would purposely just grab the 50s. Just yeah. to do, like, even if he did, like, two reps, and then he set it down to, like, beat you. Yeah. <laughs> you're trying to do that. Yeah. And, you know, meanwhile, you're, like, f from doing a whole workout, you're dead. And yeah. He's just talking crap to you, trying to get it, get you a little bit yeah. more motivated but I, I loved it i love being with him he, he's a great coach and you know enjoy playing from it was it was intense it was something that yeah. you had to show up the number one you know tight end in the country adam brenneman tight end cedar cliff and then popped up touchdown adam brenneman a 14 yard strike What's up, guys? Welcome to Brenneman Shows Up. I'm Adam Brenneman. We're here in Chandler, Arizona, talking to my friend Trace McSorley, Arizona Cardinals quarterback. Going to talk to Trace about his legendary Penn State career, one of the greatest of all time at Penn State. His time with the Baltimore Ravens, Arizona Cardinals, everything on and off the field. It's going to be a great conversation. Before we get there, make sure you guys subscribe, like, comment on this podcast, run it up, share it with all your friends. We're going to keep blowing this thing up. Let's go see what Trace is up to. I appreciate you having us to your to your spot, man. This yeah. is not, not a bad place. A little corporate housing, right? It'll get me through OTA. <laughs> I love it. Comfortable enough, so. Oh, it's good. Enjoy but it. uh, yeah, it was good to get dinner on Friday. A little. Yeah. Li I finally get back. I got someone I actually know out here. I know, right? So I'll be able no, to link good, uh, up again, get some dinner, show me a cool spot out here. Yeah, so. Kala. You like Kala. it? It was sweet. Good spot. Place was bumping. Yeah. We walked in there. It was like freaking like my head was ringing with the it door. Was like it was like a nightclub. I thought we were going to yeah. dinner. You bring me to the club. <laughs> Introduce me to Scottsdale real I did, quick. I did feel bad because we walked in there and I was like, it'd be good to like catch up and talk. Yeah. And it's freak. I can't even hear you talk the whole time. <laughs> Bachelor so, parties all around just, us. And just, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then the girl falls on your lap, right? <laughs> now, bro, we were like in a big conversation. We were talking about something. And then just... Out of the corner of my eye, I just see something coming at me. It's yeah. this chick just stumbling, stumbling falls like, right into the table, and oh, that was not good. You for gave her. her a phone back. <laughs> yeah, she left her phone on the table. And she's leaving. I had a chase That's after her phone. You know, good Samaritan. Only, only in Scottsdale. It only happens yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to it. It's crazy. How, do you like it? Like, what, what's your, what's the vibe after your first? What has it been like? You came out here in the fall, so it's been, yeah, I got been out like here six months. like end of November. Yeah, and then was here for the rest of the season. Went back home for a little bit of the offseason and just got back out last week. But I like it here, especially like getting here in December. Yeah. It's 70 degrees and sunny and we're practicing in short sleeves. You can't beat it. Shorts and everyone back home was like, I remember yeah. our first week I got here, it like snowed, I think like a foot and a half back home. Yeah. And my mom, like everyone sending these pictures of like the snow and Casey's got school off because mm -hmm. she's a teacher. Like they cancel school and yeah. It's 70 degrees. I'm just walking around in a t-shirt and shorts. And awesome. <laughs> you can't beat that. Yeah. Except, except, well, you haven't been here in like July though. July yeah, and even August, now, so. like when we go out and do like some more running and stuff. <laughs> right. We're this week. We're like the second group running, so we're yeah. not getting out on the field until like noon. Like peak brutal. heat. Brutal. And it's yeah, it's hot. Yeah. That's it's bad. It's bad. What? Uh, how'd you end up like in down here in Chandler? How'd you end up like? Um, Instead of old, you, you got to got away from old town. It was more just uh, <laughs> when I was looking around for like these short little like short-term housing that's yeah. kind of where they had them offered and it's closer to the facility yeah. like the ones they had they didn't i didn't have any out in scottsdale from what i saw because if i they would if they are they're probably 20 grand a month yeah that too. <laughs> so yeah some that made sense yeah, for me for sure. to not spend all the money in the world and then hang out here yeah. close to facility and it's easy enough i think it was a 20 minute drive super close up yeah. there so that's the nice right thing about this area like everything's like 20 minutes away you can be in scottsdale yeah. phoenix like no anyway, that's sweet i like it's close i like that because yeah. it you can get like a different vibe everywhere for you sure. go, and it's yeah. easy enough to just jump in the car and go, and you don't got to drive 45 minutes for, for sure. a completely different spot. You, you were just on a trip all over the country, huh? You were uh, in the... Uh, uh, up in Montana, Montana last yeah. week, yeah. yeah. Or How was two that? Two weeks ago. It was sweet. It's a completely different world yeah. out there. I saw that the pictures look sweet. That's oh, why, like, that's like the asking. views out there were incredible. Yeah. Like, literally driving around. Like, we walked out of our, uh, like, the hotel room we were staying at, and they had, like, a pond that was, like, right in front of this, like, massive mountain. Mm -hmm. And it was like views out there are beautiful, but there's a complete opposite. You drive 20 minutes, you gotta drive like eight hours Dude, to go. Yeah, no phone service. No <laughs> phone service. We're driving yeah. from 
we were staying in like I think it's called Paradise Valley, like I don't know, an hour out, like east yeah. of Bozeman. And we were driving all the way up to Glacier National Park, which is like Canada basically. Like yeah. Northwest Montana. Just driving through like a no cell phone service. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm terrified I'm gonna like pop a tire and I'm gonna have to walk a <laughs> mile and a half yeah. to the nearest house just to ask someone to borrow their phone because I got no yeah. cell service. It was and I'm in a completely different spot. So. Yeah. But it was it was sweet. Definitely enjoyed the trip. Got to do a whole bunch of stuff I never would have done. Fly yeah. fishing, go out and see wildlife in the park, wolves, bison running around. You're an outdoorsman now. Yeah. At least that way. <laughs> I, I acted it. like it. That's good. Well, what's what's life like right now with OTAs? Like, take me through your your like schedule nowadays. What what what, what are we doing? <clears throat> right now, it's just like phase one stuff. So yeah. it's more workouts, and we get I think it's like an hour hour and a half of meeting time, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, that's it. Next week, we'll move into it's called like phase two, which okay. is. Now we can actually get out onto the field. Like, do more people come at that point? Like more, more people probably show up because that's like you can actually go out on the field and run routes. And, yeah. You know, do routes on air, individual drills, stuff like that. Still can't do like, you know, competition against each other. Mm-hmm. But you at least get out on the field. Like right yeah. now, if we want to go throw, we have to go to like a neighboring field. Like, we oh, can't okay. go can't do it at, the, at the facility. Yeah, yeah, we're not allowed at the facility because NFLPA rules or yeah. whatever it is. So. And most veterans aren't there right now, right? Yeah, right now most of because I saw the media made a big deal about like Cardinals veterans won't show up the mini yeah. camp, and I was well, like, a lot of well, those don't, guys don't, like, they, they don't they got their none of them go plans. right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, they got their workout plans that they've yeah. been doing for eight years. Like they're not going to switch it up until the on field stuff shows up and they yeah. can actually get here and start working together yeah. on the field. What what's like a big um, you know? I think one thing that fans always like have questions about is like NFL off season. Like mm-hmm. what is something that like in this time that you feel like you're like working on to get better? Cause at this point you've had yeah. so many off seasons. Like, what is it? Is it just staying in shape? Is it like, I'm trying to get better at this, this or this? Yeah. Like I, I kind of try and like phase it out. Yeah. So like, I don't want to be doing some super crazy workouts, getting in shape in February, then March. Yeah. And then, you know, we finish up, we got to go all the way through June and I get a month off and then camp, uh, camp doesn't start till yeah. August. That's when yeah. you really need to be in shape. <laughs> so I uh, just kind of like, uh, phase it up almost mm. like did like this first part of the offseason did a whole bunch of like core stability flexibility stretching did like pilates yoga trying to like something i'd never done before mm-hmm. uh so worked that into it and then you know starting to get back like at the end yeah beginning of march probably started like actually getting on the field throwing a few times a week that's all like footwork mechanics just yeah. accuracy like the you know, and then being able to actually like in my mind rep out a new system, like new routes. Yeah. Being able to get on the field and talk about a different route that's just a different name from what I had yeah. before. So being able to get that is, you know, that's the stuff that this time is. And probably is the first for. time getting reps, like real reps at it too, because you'd probably yeah. get them during so the like, season. So yeah, right? we get on the field yeah. next week will be my first time actually operating Cliff system. Yeah. And being able to get out there. So looking forward to being able to get that, get those reps in now, so that I'm not having to figure it out come training yeah. what's cliff's system like like what's uh like from um, level? you don't got you don't give any details but <laughs> yeah, you what's it? <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah uh no i mean it's it's a lot of you know air raid kind of that system yeah. um that you know predicated a lot on spacing out a defense mm-hmm. finding gaps in the defense making yeah. them cover the entire field and then still having that run game that you know spread people out once they try and cover outside running inside yeah. Similar to what, you know, we ran a little bit at Penn State, kind of a little Lamar. bit of RPO stuff, but, yeah. you know, not too much. It's crazy how the RPOs don't translate as much to the league as I you know. would think yeah. because they're, you sit there, it's all the college game now. Mm-hmm. Everyone's running RPO probably every other play. Yeah. But it, for whatever reason, just doesn't phase over yeah. as well. It's crazy to me, just from like my short time in coaching too, realize how much like the game of football and especially the NFL is like just a copycat league. Like oh, everyone yeah. just copies each other. Like one team will run a play like week two, week three, like every team runs a play. <laughs> oh, dude, it's nuts. Like, you really see stuff. stuff. Yeah, like we're watching film for like a game plan and we just, we're watching all these other yeah. plays and then we'll just plug, plug them in. All right, this is what we're going to call it this week. Exactly. Go through it. And like even as we're going through like cut ups now of what like we're running, because mm-hmm. Cliff kind of brought a new system to the league. Like not a lot yeah. of teams are running it. Yeah, right. Yeah. So like when they first got there, I was talking to one of the coaches, he said they had to like, find like really search to find cut ups of plays like when they were installing mm-hmm. so they could you know they weren't just showing college film the yeah. professional installs the entire time but then now he's like dude just so you like everyone's running everyone's running the stuff, plays, like yeah. run game stuff and you know yeah. reading defenders rpos like this so it's so more prevalent now yeah that it's crazy yeah you said it's a copycat league and yeah 
eventually it's gonna, someone's going to bring something new or for sure. Yeah. What, what's, what's Cliff like as a, as a coach? It's cool. I mean, yeah. Exactly what you would expect. Back, Just a yeah. yeah, laid back, cool Such dude. Such like the coolest dude of all time. Yeah, yeah no, he's real cool. But he's got like a, a chip on his shoulder kind of that, yeah. like I remember we, we were playing in uh, Dallas and that's, you know, his home state, Texas. Mm-hmm. So he's a little bit extra fired yeah. up for it. And pregame, you could tell he had a little more juice. So uh-huh. we scored a touchdown. He's walking, this is my state. He's like, <laughs> he's all jacked up. So he's got that chip on his shoulder, which I like. I love playing for a coach that's competitive, got chip on his yeah. shoulder. And especially guys, you know, he's calling the plays like that as a quarterback that I I play like with the chip on my shoulder. I carry myself like that. It's it's cool to have yeah. a coach like that. Carrying himself he, he's got so much swag. It's like, so yeah, it's like every, all blacked out. With yeah, they're all black on the <laughs> sidelines or – even that uh, that picture from the draft a few years. Ago, oh my just, god! With the with the yeah, mountains dude, in, in the background. He's like, like just <laughs> he had like this, he had like five phones on the table. Yeah, just laptops. He's got his fireplace on. It's ninety eight degrees. He's just <laughs> popping it on for the picture. Did, did you uh, have you ever heard that podcast that Sean McVay did? And he had Cliff on it. I don't know if you. Remember. No. It's like it was so Sean McVay hosted the podcast and had Cliff on it, and uh, and McVay and Cliff were talking about how Cliff was dating all these supermodels and stuff. And it's just, it's just the funniest thing. <laughs> no, nah, I didn't just see thing. that. Yeah, no, but it's, it's something you should listen to. Hey, it's just, Cliff's living his life. He's living the life, man. Him. That's a good life. Let, let's talk about uh, the process. And I asked you this at dinner on Friday, like the process of like how you actually got to Arizona. Yeah. Because it's an interesting, like, because you're on the practice squad at Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And then there's like some, there's some um, like semantics there of like how you have to go about it to get off the practice squad to yeah. the active roster. So take us through that process. Yeah, so like basically, to get to the active roster, like as a practice squad player, you can get claimed by another team anytime. Yeah. So as we were going through it and we were practicing that week in Baltimore and that was a week like Lamar was sick. He had kind of like a mm-hmm. cold. So they, they kind of kept him out, you know, Wednesday and then he still feeling sick on Thursday. So I was like basically the number two that whole week. Yeah. And with the ch- like we're talking, like there's a chance like we might have to be elevated. It all depends on how Lamar's feeling, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So then Friday comes around. Lamar's better, practice Friday, so I think, all right, everything's cool. And then I get, like, after practice, get to my locker, and I, you know, check my phone, you know, you sit down mm-hmm. at, for 30 minutes at your locker, check yeah, your phone yeah, after yeah. practice. Scrolling through Yeah, Instagram. just scrolling through whatever. <laughs> and I got a text from my agent that said, hey, Arizona's going to sign you. Uh-huh. It's like, all right, sweet. He's like, just give me a call later. So I ended up giving him a call, and he explained it out to me. And there was a chance for Baltimore to – basically signed me to their active roster to keep me around okay. numbers wise and I'm not working out. You know, they said they, if they could, they would have, but they had yeah. IR just the whole numbers game yeah. that the front office deals with is insane. Correct. How it all works. Yeah. So I don't understand um, any of it. <laughs> I don't get it at all either. Yeah. But so they, uh, yeah, so we, they said we can't, you know, they, they were happy for me, a great opportunity, but mm. then they were still saying, we still don't know about Lamar's deal for Sunday. So we might, we need you to hang around. Uh, right. If Arizona's cool with it, you you hang around till Sunday, mm. still travel with the team. If he wakes up Sunday and I'm feeling good, you're gonna be elevated. So Arizona's cool. They're like, yeah, they're, I think they were they had a game. They were away, so they mm-hmm. weren't gonna bring me to wherever the away game yeah. was. So I traveled with the team to Chicago. Lo and behold, Lamar's like, damn, on his deathbed. <laughs> like I remember seeing him in the locker room. He's laying on like a trainer table. He's got his jacket over, like sick sick yeah. as a dog. No way he's playing. No shot yeah. he's playing. <laughs> So I suited up Monday or Sunday, and then I had a flight out from Baltimore Monday morning to Arizona. Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. And and so the Baltimore coaches didn't know you were leaving, right? At, at during the game. Yeah, because they, they didn't want to like they don't make them. that yeah. they're trying to win a football game. Yeah. They didn't want to like have an extra distraction of that. So you know, I let them know. Uh, Harbaugh knew because he's obviously head coach involved yeah. in personnel decision. So he was aware of it. He had talked to me. During our walkthrough, it was basically, hey, really happy for you. Wish we could keep you around, but numbers wise, you got guys, blah, blah, blah. So, but he was happy for me that I get a That's great right. opportunity out here. And then I, I let the quarterback coach know after that game in Chicago, um, just so we didn't come in on Monday and yeah. I'm not there. <laughs> You're and he's not, like, never the seen again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. texting, calling me on Monday, trying to figure out where I'm at. So, no, that's funny. I want to, I want to go into, uh, a little bit of like just kind of your background and like your recruitment through high school. Like you were like a 18 time state champion in high school, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many state championships? Four? Uh, four? We won three. We lost three, our senior yeah. year in the state game. So, but I feel like throughout your whole career, you've kind of had like this like underdog mentality mm-hmm. or like because everyone's kind of doubted you. When you were in high school, 
no one wanted to recruit as a quarterback. They yeah. wanted you to play safety. Like, talk about that process. And you ended up committing to Vanderbilt with Coach Franklin. Mm-hmm. Like, just take us through your recruitment process a little bit. Yeah, it was, like you say, it was up and down. Yeah. Kind of like, I had a lot of success in high school. You know, set a bunch of, like, you know, records, state records, wins, yeah. right, all that type of stuff. Won a ton of games. And we had a lot of guys on my team that were getting recruited. We had Alex Carter that went to Stanford. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, which I think you know, you play. You might have played in the Matt, under, what's his Roland. last name? Roland. Yeah, yeah you played right. in the Under Armour game with him. He went yeah. to Florida. You know, Cam. He went to Wake yeah. Forest. So we had a lot of, a lot of guys that were kind of getting yeah. a lot of traction. A lot of schools were coming through, and I just wasn't getting recruited out. I, I kind of hoped I would. Yeah. And it was. Like I said, there were a lot of teams that were more looking at me as like a safety and, mm-hmm. and that athlete position, maybe play receiver, safety, bring in, yeah. see where it goes. Did that did that piss you off? Or did you um, did you know you wanted you knew you wanted to play quarterback, right? I knew I wanted to play quarterback, but yeah. there was a time where I was like because I was getting more like the Should bigger school safety? offers as <laughs> yeah. like safety. So there was yeah. a time where I kind of had to think about it. And I had fun playing safety. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um but at the end of the day, like my heart was at quarterback and mm-hmm. I knew that's where I wanted to win. It kind of came down to where I was going to commit. Once I decided I was going to play quarterback, like that list just shrunk down. Yeah, yeah. And it it was between Vanderbilt, uh, Boston College, and Wake. It was like the three schools that were most heavily recruiting me as a quarterback. Yeah. And then it was like Franklin was just when I got down to the school, it was SEC, you know, uh, Nashville, like just everything yeah. kind of combined. Kimberly. Great school. And then yeah. Franklin was hard, like. Press me on your quarterback. We believe in you, you all yeah. that type of stuff. So that sold me because I I felt all I wanted and all I needed was a coach to believe in me at, as a quarterback. And yeah. once I got on the field, I could take care of the rest. Yeah. So that was it. So I ended up committing to Vanderbilt, and then the whole flip the him flipping yeah. over fiasco. And then you flip. Yeah. That that period was actually crazy because so he got the job. I want to say it was like mid January or something like that. And this is right before signing day, right? Yeah, it's Febu- right before uh, your signing day. It was what February second to third, but yeah. it was when they only had the one. That's right. Thank yeah. God they didn't have two because I yeah. probably would have already been signed to Vanderbilt. I would have done the early signing. Yeah, see that that's the downside there. of the early thing that no yeah. one talks so about. Thank God yeah. they didn't have that I then because yeah. I would have definitely been. Think about a different stuck life would have been there. Also <laughs> different. <laughs> Just the littlest thing. Yeah, know, I maybe. might be a lawyer or something. <laughs> Literally, yeah, you probably yeah, you're working right now. Yeah, but yeah, so he got the job at. Penn State, but he wasn't able to like none of those coaches were able to reach out to recruits because they had to get cleared through compliance, right. NCAA rules, NCAA, and all that. Yeah. Get their work phone. Yeah, get, their, get all that yeah. stuff. So yeah. we were sitting there. It was probably like somewhere between a week to ten days where I didn't know I still had to stand. And we didn't have a coach at Vanderbilt at the time, so I didn't even know if I still had an offer there. That's right. I didn't know what Franklin's deal was if yeah. I was, he was going to want to bring me along. So I kind of started reaching back out to schools like. Hey, like, what do you got? Like, <laughs> is there anywhere that has yeah. any kind of position open for me? Uh-huh. And Wake still had his position. So I was like real close to going there. Really? And then Franklin called me. I remember on the way home. And I was like all pissed off at him because yeah. like, I hadn't heard from him. He yeah. didn't How long had it been? Like left. a week? It was a little bit more than a week, like, but I hadn't heard anything. And I tried to reach out to him and Ronnie. And because of like NCAA rules, like now I know why. They were yeah. like, just hang on. Like, that's all they could say was just yeah. hang on. And I was like, well, that helps me not at all. Like, yeah. I can't just yeah. hang on here. Yeah. So uh, he called me and I was all pissed off. He was like, hey, man, you know, I wanted to give you a call. We're at Penn State. I think it was like a Wednesday. And he was like, if you if you have time, we'd love to get you up to Penn State this weekend. Uh-huh. And I got home. I told my parents, like, yeah, Coach Franklin called me. Like, he wants to come to Penn State. I'm still like, I'll stand off. Yeah. About it. yeah. <laughs> and we're like, all right, well, my mom and dad were like, let's just go check it out. It's yeah. from where we lived. It was like a three, three and a half hour drive. Mm easy enough to get up there. So they made plans for it. I remember I'm still like, I, we got up early in the morning. I think I slept the whole way there. I, we got yeah. there and I think I saw like bedhead. And my dad was all mad at me. He's like, dude, like look a lot. Like yeah. you're at a recruiting trip here. So at this point you're thinking, I, I'm probably just gonna go to Wake. I was yeah, kind of thinking like that. And then yeah. I also, cause I didn't know if I still even had like a, a scholarship. scholarship to Penn yeah. State. Yeah. Like he had called me and said, hey, just come on up, like check the place out. Yeah. But I didn't know if I had an offer there. So then, you know, which, as we start going around, checking out Lash, checking out, you know, you walk into Beaver Stadium, you go yeah, it's crazy. see downtown, check out campus. And I'm starting to, like, each place we go, I'm, like, falling more in love with the school. Yeah. And then we finally meet with Coach Frank. He's like, hey, I want you to know, like, I'm sorry everything went out, but you do have an offer here. We'd love for you to, to mm-hmm. join us That's here. Sweet. 
And basically, once he had said that, I knew. Like, we went back, uh, spent a night at the hotel because we had some other stuff the next day. Yeah. And pretty much when we got back to the hotel, I told my parents, like, I'm coming here. Yeah. Like, was this that, your official visit? No, it wasn't. This so was that was, official. like, I did, like, an unofficial before. And then I came it. back up. I think it was, like, what, two weeks later. Yeah. Official visit. With your whole crew. Yeah, and that, was, and that was when I was your host, you were, right? You were your host. You were yeah. Austin Whipple. <laughs> Shout out to Austin showed, Whipple. Showed us how to do Penn State the right yeah, way. Yeah, we, well, we had a and good And that time. was like, once we did that, that was like hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. For <laughs> you everyone, were too. Yeah. No, that was fun. That was a uh, good old uh, what's, oh, 1101 in the apartments. Yeah, the place. Well, apartments. I, fantastic. I, I, I have this memory of you being there. I remember like Troy Reader being there. Reader was and, there. Kabinda. Uh, Amani. Yeah, Amani loved it that weekend. Yeah, I remember like he remember like that. literally like halfway through that weekend he's like, "We're all coming here." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we he was so time. pumped up. Cole was there. Uh, who else was there? Was Mike? Mike was in your class, right? He was. I don't think he was there that weekend though. He oh, was he, no, class. he took his official. Um, he probably took it for the during the he, Michigan game. He was a game. big recruit, and yeah, he was, he was too cool for yeah, that, too for cool the to kids come on the second. Yeah. Second round of kids. Yeah, no, that was a, that was a fun weekend. I'm trying to think of like what it, we, what what do we what, what we do that weekend. I, I just remember uh, we had, I remember the one party we had at 11, at my apartment. You had a party. We, at your it spot. almost got shut down because it was. Yeah, like, I remember Penn State was like a dry people. campus. You know, yeah. a ton of people. Yeah. <laughs> we had a ton of people yeah. in there. Um, and we ended up going to like a fraternity or something. Yeah, I fun. think that's. I mean, usually that's, that's, <laughs> that's what, what you happens. Do. Yeah. I remember we actually no we did go to a fraternity. I forget which one, but. You know, you try and you roll up to a fraternity with a group of like 20, 50 people, yeah, 20, <laughs> 50 dudes. people. Yeah. Most of them are dudes and they're like, hell no, you ain't coming yeah. in. And that you were talking to the guy and then I remember Hack rolled up. Yeah. And then they're and like, they were all good. right, come on in. <laughs> and I was like, I had, zero, the I had zero pool. And it was, <laughs> well, you were like, you were basically getting like people in here, there, yeah. and then he rolls up and then the whole crew just rolls yeah. in. So, and you were like, that, that's what it's like. To that's what a Penn State quarterback. quarterback can do. All right, yeah. cool, I'm in. That's funny. And then, so then you get to Penn State, and that first year, so you were you went in 2015, right? So you got to be there. Uh, so you played. No, one, I graduated 14. So my first season was 15 or 14. Yeah. Okay, so you so you were there with um, so you redshirted, right? Redshirted then, that first year. And then you were there with Hack for two years. Yeah, right? Hack was there for Hack. Well, what what was that like? Playing like playing under Hack for a little bit. It was awesome. Right? He's yeah. a great dude. You know, you know yeah. him, but like, being able like to learn from a guy like that that. Yeah. He was, he learned from OB, who's, you see how respected mm-hmm. he is, just his mind as a coordinator yeah. and all that. And he soaked up so much of that, yeah. that being able to like basically learn from him, mm-hmm. kind of how to watch film, what he's looking at, yeah. pre-snap, where his eyes are, like what he's thinking. And then sitting there and I mean, he'll sit on the board yeah. with some dip and just talk all Smart, day long. Yeah. Give him a he's can, always got a can of chew. And Probably just, got a Bud Light with him. And he's yeah, but, yeah, give him a beer and a, a board yeah. and a marker, and he'll talk football for yeah. hours. So it was great being able to, you know, sit back and learn from him. But mm-hmm. then, like, I kind of just watched how he handled everything. Yeah, I was like, gonna say, all the you, you watched his ups and downs. Like, he yeah, didn't even, yeah, he that was and a crazy those like those years for him was like there were so like yeah. super high highs and then the yeah. lows like were crazy, and he was just basically getting attacked yeah. by like media and, and Penn State media. So. Yeah crazy all the fans and stuff like that so like being able just to sit back and see how he handled that and just kind of stay steady through it all was yeah. i think it was super helpful for me when i started you know experiencing yeah. the highs and lows of being a starting quarterback in college and it helped me out a lot no it's got to be good just to experience like seeing like how important it is just to have that like mental stability throughout the ups yeah. and downs and like how hack handled it and yeah he went through that was a crazy two years no he went through it like was, for a while. <laughs> that was tough. I remember like we used to, Hack and I used to uh, go to Cracker Barrel on like Sunday mornings yeah. after the games. And it was just like, he was just getting beat up in the media. Mm-hmm. And that was, I mean, that was the time. You know, it's kind of crazy too. Uh, no one, no one anymore ever talks about like the Penn State sanctions and stuff yeah. like that. Do you, do you remember like that being a big part of like your recruiting process or like hearing about that? Um, it was a little There were still sanctions. Uh, weren't there the, still yeah, sanctions? Yes, so when I got there, still had two years left, like the bull band, the bull band scholarship right? and yeah. all that. And... So I remember like when I was, when I had like committed to Penn State, there mm-hmm. was still a little bit like a week and a half of before signing day and a couple of schools were sort of reaching out to me. Why are you going there? And they were like, why would you want to go there? Yeah. And like Vanderbilt basically tried to jump back on. Yeah. I don't even remember who the coach was. I think it was like defensive De- coach. Derek Mason, I think, right? He, yeah, no, he was, but oh, I, whoever oh, I was coach. talking yeah. to, it wasn't him. Yeah. And he was something like, why would you want to go sit behind a guy for two years? Yeah. And I was like, it just for me it was the right fit and yeah. 
all that. But yeah, they were, and then they bring up the sanctions, like you guys wouldn't <laughs> even be in a bowl game and yeah. whatever. And like kind of in my mind was like, all right, well, if I'm sitting behind someone for two years, they have two more years of bowl bands left. Perfect. Yeah. Like if I'm sitting behind them, I won't be playing those bowl games anyway. Yeah. So you know, be able that, to just like soak the, up and prepare for two years and then I'll have from that yeah. on to play. That's such a big problem I see now, like with young guys too. Like no one wants to sit anymore for two years. Oh, like no. think and about no how much that probably that. helped your career. Like if you would have went in there and had to play as a true freshman, like not that you wouldn't have done well, but like it you're been just not as prepared. Yeah. yeah. Like you're not a, as, not well as mature. adapted to it yeah. and even just adapting to the system and everything, yeah. like being able to learn it. Like it, having two years of just yeah. experience and practice and in the meeting rooms and being yeah. comfortable around the coaches and everything, it, it helped a lot. So you became the starter then in 2016 at Penn State? Was yeah, 16 first, season? first year. And you, that was the open competition, right? With you and- uh, Me and Tommy. You yeah. and Tommy Steve. They that, brought in Jomo. And, That's right. And uh, yeah. they got rid of uh, Donovan, JD after like the regular yeah. season. I saw he just got a job in the NFL, by the way. Did Donovan. he? Yeah. He was in Jacksonville. I remember I saw him at the combine. Yeah, he was in Jacksonville. So he just got hired with- um, the Packers as a, the Packers. as a, like a, as an analyst or something. Yeah. yeah that's what he's doing how, in Jacksonville. Yeah. And I like remember my Penn state. It was yeah. like, and granted we were getting, we weren't doing yeah. so successful, but he was, he did not seem like he was enjoying it very much Dude, there. He was miserable. <laughs> and I, I love JD. Like JD is no, like one awesome. of my dudes, but like, I just remember like that, those, cause I saw him, so he was the OC at university of Washington yeah, the last, last couple year. years. And when I was at ASU, so we used to like talk all the time mm -hmm. and stuff. And he was just in like such a different oh, completely guy, different, different mood than I, than I remember. Like when I saw him at the combine, we were doing like those train station interviews yeah. where you're bouncing around. So like, happy. <laughs> you know, he jumps up. He's like, what's up, my man? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's I'm like, this I was like, is you, not I was like, you smile? Yeah. yeah. I was like, you're smiling? Like, yeah. I did not expect that. From that was, a, I mean, that was like a, those two years at Penn State were miserable for everybody on all yeah. offense at least. Even like you said, like the. Yeah, they eliminated the sanctions like my freshman year, but you still yeah. had the impact of them. Like, yeah. we didn't have a full offensive roster. line was terrible. Our O line was we had Guy and Dowry were both came yeah. in as D tackles. Yeah, true. And then yeah, that was their first year playing offensive line, and they were I starting center Dowry and Guy were starting. Yeah, that's right. Dude, th yeah, that offense who used to throw the, the key screens all oh, the time. Oh, key screens I'm all the like, time. Like, dude, you were down the field a little bit. <laughs> Gosh, that was brutal. Mm -hmm. That's funny. So then, okay, so the quarterback competition with Tommy, what yeah. was that like? Cause I remember when that was going on, um, that was like kind of a close competition, right? I mean, yeah, I'm no, sure you was. were going to get the whole time, but I remember like talking to people during that mm -hmm. time cause I was at UMass. I remember like texting to like Mike and they're like, you know, like Tracy's going to win this thing, but like Tommy looks good. No, Tommy was playing well. Like, yeah. you know, Tommy's great athlete now. He's, yeah. he's been able to carve himself out a little career for himself, but yeah. you know, he's, he definitely, it was a, it was a real good competition. I think we pushed each other, which yeah. was, beneficial for both of us mm -hmm. like it wasn't like we got in that competition and it was all right bro it's me versus you like yeah. you know i wasn't helping him out or you know whatever and we're both learning jomo's offense for the first time yeah and like that was having to learn an offense together as an entire room i think helped us out mm -hmm. like the most like for both of our careers and even like Joe Brady was the uh, OC. That's right. Or no, I see the uh, GA at that time. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. He was a GA. <laughs> so he was our GA, and then Bill was a quarterback yeah. with us, and so now he's an OC. Like Bill, for all oh, Billy Fessler. Fessler, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for yeah. all of us to, you know, we sat in like we basically made like the entire signals for that offense. Yeah. And we were in the room for like four hours, like right at the beginning of it. Yeah. Making up every single signal, going through it, and like learning the offense together. Mm. And I think that just helped all of our careers. Yeah. And I, it was awesome to kind of be able to learn it all together and you know during practice like when tommy was in i'm standing like in joe brady's pocket if because yeah. jomo's calling the plays the entire time on the sideline so i'm behind like you know standing with joe brady talking through everything and then after each period me and tommy bill joe like we're all getting together mm -hmm. you know jomo's with us we're talking through each thing and like it helped us all get better that what, entire competition what, what was what's jomo like personality wise as a coach Dude, he's fun to play. He's fun yeah. to play for. That's what Mike, Mike always told me, like how much he loved. He's so much fun to play for. Like, yeah. so I remember the uh, we're like in pr spring practice, and you know we hit. I think I hit. It was Godwin on like a glance, and uh -huh. he you know sp splits the safeties, goes for like eight, scores yeah. a touchdown, and then you know jog back a few high fives here and there, and that was it. And Jomo stopped practice. He's like, guys, if we're not going to get excited about like yeah. an 80 yard touchdown, like yeah. what, what am I doing here? Like, yeah. Why did I come here? Like, yeah. I want to get excited about it. That's it's like, it. next time you score a touchdown, I want you guys to go 
effing nuts. Like yeah. you celebrate, you yeah. you guys enjoy success because that's what we're gonna do here. Yeah. And it that mentality kind of helped to change the course of yeah. what I think Penn State was at the time and like where we were going. Like we got excited about yeah. football. We got excited about having success and being succi- being excited about it and having mm. that like mentality that we're going to be yeah. successful, it completely changed. Like, the no, he, had a, of he clearly had a huge impact on that program. Yeah. Like, and just talking to Gesicki about it too, like he would always say that the best thing about Jomo was like how much confidence he gave you as a player. Like he oh, made yeah. you feel like you were like a really, there were like player. multiple times that season where we're on the sidelines and we do like the sideline huddle before a drive. Yeah. And he's like, all right, we're going to run blah, blah, blah. And we blocked us up right. It's 80 yard touchdown. Yeah. And, <laughs> Just Damn it, it if it didn't happen that exact play <laughs> like that. It was like Sigma had a run against, I want to say it was Purdue, mm-hmm. that he called it on. There was, in the Big Ten Championship, the post of Saeed, yeah. he called that one later before right, he came yeah. out. And that was, that one was cool because it was like, we're on the sideline. He was between like calling that, like the double post play mm-hmm. or like a run to get the drive mm-hmm. started. And he's like, what should I do? Like, for Franklin, what do you think? And Franklin looks at me, dude, it's your, your offense, your call. Mm-hmm. And she jumped was like, well, I'm calling the shot then. <laughs> it's like, all right, block this thing up. It's an 80-yard touchdown. Yeah. And damn it, if it didn't happen. That's awesome. That's sweet. What, what uh, that 2016 season, I mean, probably like one of the best seasons in Penn State history. I mean, yeah, what, what especially like how we started. Like yeah. two and two, we got the, we got our the crap. Oh, I forgot down. we started two and two. We That's started right. bad. Yeah. Like yeah. we played Pitt, lost to Pitt at Pitt when they were bringing back that rivalry. Oh, that's right. That was the first game they were bringing that Lost back. Lost the pit. And then, <laughs> that had to be brutal. That was tough. That had to be that tough. Was a, that was a Twitter tough was not a good place to be on after No, that. especially because, like, we lost because I threw an interception at the end. Like, we were down three. That's right. yeah. We were driving, had a chance to, like, you know, potentially get a few more yards and go yeah. kick a field goal. And I tried to force it to Mike, and okay. it got picked off. Yeah, and the game was over. That. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we lost there, and then we got the hell beat out of us by Michigan in the big house. That's right, yeah. And then we're playing Minnesota, and, like, first half is not not going well. And we're getting booed off the field. That's right, yeah. We're getting booed off the field. We come back Dude, out. They, they were, like, chanting fire Franklin. Yeah, they were chanting game. fire Franklin. We're getting booed off the field. Yeah. It was bad. And, like, we came back out, and we had that, like, miracle play to Irv where yeah. dude wasn't even looking. I know, yeah. <laughs> And then he just turned the I ball I forgot about Irvin chest. Charles. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's got. He's actually kind of got himself maybe an opportunity. Really? Where's yeah. He, at? he was at IUP this last year. Oh really? And like balled out and went to like the, like their senior bowl for yeah. really? that level. And oh, like he's always been out a again. freak. Yeah. He's a freak athlete. Yeah. So was, nice. I was actually throwing with him back in Jersey before Mike's wedding. Yeah. And I mean, dude's Absolutely. still like freak. jumping out of the gym. Yeah, he's like, like six five. Runs like a like gazelle. Yeah. Like he's like six five, two thirty. Like yeah, running, jumping like forty yeah. inch, like nuts. What so was we'll the, uh, that Ohio State game in 2016? What was like? I mean, that obviously was was insane. Yeah. You guys blocked the field goal, and what was the what was the, like the aftermath of that? Was it was that like the, the, the craziest after- night in Penn State history? Yeah, that, that <laughs> night was nuts. That yeah. was so even just leaving. the Can stadium, you even go out at that point? Like people probably mob you anywhere you go. So like even just leaving the stadium because they had like I don't want to call it a riot downtown, yeah. but like there, people were yeah. <laughs> yeah. People were like just lining the streets. Like you couldn't drive through. Yeah. And that was how I had to drive through to get back to the retreat. Uh-huh. So I'm driving <laughs> through and it's just a mob. And I kind of like had my windows rolled down. I'm just trying to like slowly move my way through people. I'm like kind of honking trying to get uh-huh. through. Does anyone realize it's you? No, Neither, they yeah. didn't know it was me. Yeah. And then I finally get to the point where I could like cross. I want to say it was like Beaver mm-hmm. to like get past it all. Mm-hmm. And but it was a red light and some massive people. Like, all right, no one's coming. I'm just yeah. slowly go through. And I'm starting to go through, and they're like, yo, look out. And I look, and there's just horses coming, like, down the street. So I, I throw my car in reverse. I get out the way. There's a bunch of cops on horses rolling by. That's and then so funny. finally get out. But, no, we ended up, because we had that podcast house that we went to. Yeah. And then right, that yeah. pl- like that place was nuts. Like, that was a mob scene getting in yeah. there. Like, some of the stories, like, my sister was a freshman that year. Uh-huh. So she was trying to come, like, meet up with us. And there were so many people, like she was outside there, just like, hey, can you come to the door and get me? Yeah. So I walk out to the door and I open it, it's just a sea of people. And there's some chick, not my sister, standing there, and she goes, hey, I'm Tracy Sully's sister. And I look uh-huh. at him like, no, you're not. I'm like, <laughs> you're saying that to the wrong person, lady. Like, yeah, I finally got her in, but yeah, no, that night was, 
She's probably been using that for a long time. If she, if she, uh, said, she said, said it she, so confidently, sorry. I was almost like taking a Are you? Like, yeah. not. <laughs> That's so funny. But uh, no, yeah, that night was nuts. Like, I think that they had to like call the cops on the house to like I just bet. to get people to leave. Yeah. Like five, six in the morning. Like, Wait, couldn't was shut that, it was down. that the house that all the players lived at? Yeah. Like all yeah, the was, all, like, all, all the, the, all the, all the old ones, guys, the yeah. older guys, all the old guys that had, let up by like Tom Pancos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. What? But yeah, what? No, that was, that that house was sick. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, I was. I remember when that that was like as I was leaving was when they were like trying to make that thing happen. Yeah, I got shut down by Franklin, and then a lot of those. So it kind of went through because a lot of those guys that were trying to do it mm-hmm. ended up leaving the program. Oh, that's how. That so happened, they yeah. were like, "Well, now Franklin can't tell us no." So yeah. they did it, and then. Yeah. They ended up, because you know, they were still all our teammates, we're all still friends with yeah. them. They were really just like letting us all in. That's it was, so funny. It was sweet. Penn State's a wild place, man. Great spot. <laughs> Great place. <laughs> what, what do you think's your uh, your favorite moment of your Penn State career? If you had to pick one. That's tough, huh? Oh, it is. Because like, you were just talking about the Ohio State game. That always pops up. Yeah. Big Ten championship. Big Ten tra- obviously, winning, it's gotta be that, winning right? that. That's probably, that is probably yeah. like the. I remember you being up on you that podium. The, uh, you threw the flag and go to Mike in the Bay Championship game. Yeah, right? I hit that one to Mike. What, that what, was to what do you get call, started. Jomo had a name uh, for that. Bink. Sing, Sting. Sting, was, that's no, right. It was, Sting was a play call, but the route was Sting. Sting, yeah. Yeah, yeah we hit that. And then well, we had Saeed on that on that poster, that double post. Yeah. We had Saeed in a comeback. That, Saeed, Saeed balled oh, that did. season, yeah. And then the best was that wheel to uh, Saquon. Oh, Saquon. That, that's yeah, the one that won it. Yeah. Uh, and we we had checked to it, and yeah. it was T.J. Watt was, like, trying to run underneath of it, uh-huh. and Saquon just ran by him. I remember being out at a bar at UMass when you guys were winning that, uh, when you guys won the Bay Ten Championship game, and everyone, all my boys were like, like, you must be sick. You transferred out of Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, that game was nuts. We got, we went, like, like, every game that year, we got down huge early. Yeah. And Second half team. Yeah, second half team. <laughs> I right, like that one of the first plays. I'll never forget this. Like we ran just like a little inside zone. I'm reading the end. It's TJ Watt, mm-hmm. and I hand it off. Go to like take a few steps. I carry out my fake, and TJ Watt just sawed me in half. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> lit me up. Like one of the biggest hits I've ever taken. Uh-huh. Like f- heels to the sky. Like land yeah. on my back, and I get up and I look to like for this next signal. Uh-huh. And Billy, who was our signal, he's sitting like, dude, holy shit. Like he's you just okay? staring at me like you yeah. good. And I get up and I just kind of like shook my head, like <laughs> it was just like, holy hell, did you see that? And then so funny. Just kept going. Once you saw, you saw me like smile and laugh yeah. about it. He was like, "You're good." But it's toughness, man. I'll never forget. Like just then, yeah. it felt like just a warning shot. Like <laughs> you better, like this is gonna be a better long ass game for you. Bro. <laughs> but no, it was yeah, that game was wild. Where where did the whole like uh, sw- like swinging the bat after you scored a touchdown thing come from? The whole like conversation with Jomo. Like, yeah. Kind of Pretty much after swagger. we had that, yeah, yeah, just be excited to have some swagger about you, and yeah. like once he said that, I was like, all right, well, let's let's do it. Try and do like yeah. some kind of like little celebration, and like I'm not a dancer or anything yeah. like that. And you like Franco's rule is all like celebrate with teammates, don't draw yeah. attention to yourself. So I wanted to do something, and then at the time Billy was my roommate, mm. and we always lived together and everything, and then he. uh so we start, decided we wanted to do something like kind of together, like yeah. coming back towards the sideline because he was signaling. It'd be easy enough as you're going back to the sideline mm-hmm. to kind of come up with something. And then we were just in the weight room one time and we were screwing around with like a golf swing or home run. And he was like, yeah. well, how, what if as you run off, I just jog out, like act like toss I tossed one up and then you hit it. And we're like, that's kind of sweet. Like, let's do it. it. Yeah. And then I never thought it would catch on like how it did. But yeah. Yeah, that became oh. your like signature, signature, yeah, uh, like signature celebration. Like, that was sweet. Yeah, people would literally be like, somehow see you me, d- and they would do it. I'm like, I don't know. Somehow you, doing. you just always look so cool doing it. Like you did it in such like a cool way. It was like, <laughs> yeah, dude, so it looked swag. a lot cooler than yeah. I felt doing it. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> then you do a, you did a little uh, Kodak dance before the Rose Bowl, didn't you? You were dancing. So we did line. like that same kind of thing. Like that, uh, one of his songs was like popular like, right after that little like, yeah. thing, it, like right before that game. So then, like, before that game, I think it was, like, me and Say were, like, all right, like, one of us scores, like, we get back sideline, let's do it. Uh, and they ended up, like, of course, like, right on camera. Yeah. And just, like, <laughs> yeah. Caught in the perfect I remember moment. that, yeah. Same deal. Like, it looked a lot better than, like, <laughs> I know 
I felt doing the it. The boys were probably ripping you for that. <laughs> yeah, and all our boys back home were like, who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Trace changed so much. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. But no, it, was, it was cool. The, uh, so then when you end up leaving Penn State, you're uh, for the draft. Like, mm-hmm. I remember that process, and you were – I remember we were listening to something today on the way here, and they were talking about how they were trying to get you to train as a safety at the uh, at the combine, right? Yeah, they were trying to get me to do like the p- position drills. So how's that happen? Like, what are they, like who who comes? Like, they just some, um, like a scout asked you to do it. I think it was a scout. Like, I, so you do like all kinds of testing at the yeah. combine, like not just the field stuff. Like the whole first few days are all medical, yeah. like mental testing. Like they. Mm go through all that stuff. So the Wonderlick test. Yeah, Wonderlick yeah. test and a million different intelligence yeah. things. And as we're going through it, we finish up one of them as I'm walking out and someone was like, hey, after this, I need to see, you know, list of guys, and but my name was on it. So yeah. walk over to them when I finish up. Say, hey, you know, a handful of scouts have asked for you to work out as a safety, do the DB drills when you're done. So, and I was kind of like, I mean, how would that even work? Yeah. Uh, that was my first question, like, how? Yeah. Like, do I need to stay another day to do yeah. it with all them? Or, like, would I just do it on my own? He's like, all right, do it on your own. I was like, well, give me a second. Yeah. Like, let me think about it. And basically, like, after a minute, I was like, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Like, because I hadn't at Kinda that point. Kind of disrespectful a little bit. <laughs> well, it was that because I, I played my entire college career as a quarterback. Yeah. And then, one, I hadn't done, like, a backpedal or anything in <laughs> since high school. Yeah. So, yeah. if I was going to go do it, I'm not going to do it on a big stage in front of all these yeah. Coaches, that's like the biggest job interview I'll ever have. Like yeah. I'm not going to go out there and look stupid and be unprepared for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the you most know part. If you, look, was, if you look terrible doing it, that somehow will affect your quarterback exactly. draft like side. Exactly. Like, it's just not going to. Yeah. If I don't do it well, it's going to be yeah. a shot at, yeah. you know, me as a player, me as, you know, yeah. a quarterback somehow. Because yeah. backpedaling correlates to the football. <laughs> but yeah, so it was. And then it was the whole, like, well, I whole career was at quarterback like that's what i've done that's yeah. the position i'm playing and you know that's it yeah so no that, that had to be a interesting time just i mean it just goes back to the story of like just being doubted your whole your whole yeah. career and then people were saying you were, you weren't going to get drafted and then you yeah there was that whole deal and there, yeah. there was even like the because it was like the year before i was getting drafted going through the combine and all that was when like Taysom Hill kind of blew up that's right. Like oh, doing all this. So that. everyone was like, well, how do you feel about special teams? Yeah. And it's like, so that. because yeah. like Taysom Hill had done, I was yeah. just, I wasn't shutting down the idea. Mm-hmm. Like I was just trying to get my foot in the door. Yeah. Like if I get my foot in the door anyway, like I know, like once I get a chance, I'll, yeah. I could prove that I can play quarterback. I just yeah. need a foot in the door. So that was kind of like my whole thought process. So I kind of left the door open. So like, I remember when I would do, a lot of like these local days and stuff. And when mm-hmm. I did it with Baltimore, like they had me catch punts and yeah. like all that. Yeah, that's right. So um, went through everything with all that. So had left the door open and that was an experiment in itself, the whole yeah. special teams. Yeah. But special team, what were you like a gunner on? Gunner uh, on <laughs> so they had me doing, it was like, you know, it was all like in practice in camp. Like I never did yeah. it ever in a game <laughs> yeah. or anything like that. But it was, I was like the PP on punt. They do a PP, yeah, personal yeah, protection. Yeah, yeah, personal Don't protection. you put like lime in there? Uh, Usually they put like a DB or like running back or something. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of like the shield on punt. Yeah, oh no, I was, yeah, shield. I was like the, yeah. the guy standing on the yeah. center. Yeah. Um, and then because I think they thought like that would be the position that you could run fakes. For sure, they snap the ball. Yeah, snap the ball. Yeah. Throw it. Yeah. Run whatever. Yeah. Um, but that was like the only thing that really kind of stuck. Like yeah. they tried me on kickoff return a little bit and setting up to block a linebacker <laughs> running 40 yards is not the game I no played. no what you were <laughs> no. that's funny what was uh what was draft day like when you got picked were, were, were you at home with your i was family? at home yeah. um it was like low-key kind of stressful because yeah. like i didn't it was that third day and like we know those first two days like i wasn't getting picked. yeah, were, yeah. so but obviously the third day i was hoping that you know maybe i could get picked and yeah. we're kind of going through it and we had like it was my family was there like you know, all my grandparents, aunts, uncles, they all live yeah. within 20 minutes of us. Yeah. So, like, they came over because they wanted to be there. But we didn't want to have a bunch of people because we knew, like, there's a chance they don't get drafted. Yeah. And, and it's awkward. Then it's really awkward. <laughs> yeah. So, when we ended up, we were already going to have, I was doing, like, that Hey Rookie at the time. So, they, oh, had, did their, that? Yeah, so they had their camera crew yeah. there. There was another, like, camera crew there for something else. So it ended up being a lot more people than I was like really comfortable (laughs) with having for that entire day. And I'm just sitting on the couch, like watching TV the whole time. What was your agent? What what, did your agent think you were going to get picked? Um, No, he did. He was, he was saying like, 
his thoughts were like, because I think the third day is what, the fourth through the seventh? Yeah, like fourth, six, seven. Yeah, fourth and six, seven. So he was thinking like, you know, five, you know, potentially like four, yeah. but like five, six is probably where yeah. it was going to be. So I was like, we're sitting there watching and like a couple quarterbacks went in the fourth round. Then a couple guys started going in the fifth. Mm-hmm. So once like more guys started going off, I was like, all right, like, it's a trend. My, yeah, yeah, there's a trend, like there's a chance I get picked up. But then, and I knew kind of at the time I had, we were talking about it, there was, you know, Arizona and Baltimore, like the two teams that oh, really? okay. were kind of like going to yeah. potentially draft me. We had talked to them like, mm-hmm. hey, if, if it works out, you know, timing wise, pick yeah. wise, like we'll take you. So, and I, I remember like that morning I looked like Baltimore had a bunch of picks like they always mm-hmm. do. Like the Casa <laughs> always loves like his yeah. picks. So he, I think they had like five that day and yeah. they had like between the fifth and sixth rounds they had, that was like where most of their picks mm-hmm. were. So I was like, all right, like there's good chance that I could, you know, Baltimore's got a lot of picks in that five, yeah. six range. And then I think Arizona didn't have many. They had like maybe a fifth and a seventh or something mm-hmm. like that. So I was like, all right, you know, hopefully that fifth or sixth kind of mm-hmm. rolls around mm-hmm. the sooner the better. And our quarterbacks are starting to go. And I remember like, all right, I guess it's sixth round. I'm like, all right, Baltimore. I think I remember they had like three picks in the sixth round. Yeah. So, all right, hopefully that happens. And then the kind of things keep popping up. They're like, Baltimore trades a pick. Baltimore trades a pick. I'm like, <laughs> please dude, come pick. on. Like, <laughs> please pick one. Like, yeah. I'm dying. And then eventually, like, see my phone ring. And like, once that call happened, it was like just so much weight off my shoulder. Yeah. Like, I had just been waiting around. And, yeah. Yeah, that day literally felt like it took forever. Yeah, that had to be such a cool moment and be with all your family. And yeah, no, it was and awesome. Stuff. And being around, like, I had Casey next to me. My mom was sitting next to me. My dad was, like, like standing right next to us. Yeah. So it was, like, the four of us were all, like, you know, they, like, it was cool that we had the cameras yeah. there for that moment. I remember seeing all the all video of it with your dad and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so that was, that was a really cool moment <clears throat> to be able to share that with all of them. Yeah. And then we ended up going to, like, a, there was, like, a restaurant bar that's back cool. back home that they had because everyone back home was like well where, where's the party at yeah and my mom was like i was gonna ask you like kind of not a not a huge place yeah not a huge town <laughs> yeah no it wasn't a huge town so like and we were my parents were friends with a lot of people in the area yeah. old high school teammates that were still living yeah. there and everything so it was a it was a fun time it that's was sweet. we went out there and had a late night <laughs> i bet celebrated <laughs> as as we should have. That's that's awesome. No, that was cool. I remember I remember like seeing when you got drafted and being hyped because again, like people were saying that you weren't going yeah. to, you know. Yeah. Was, so it definitely was a weight off my shoulders getting that done, and then yeah. pretty much from that point on, I was all right. Now I actually have to make the team to make yeah. this thing work. No, right. Well, so what what was uh how was Baltimore? Like how was how was that whole you know what were the two years right? Yeah, two, two years. years. So what was what was that being with Lamar the whole time? Like how how was your time there? It was awesome. Like yeah. everyone that I met there, organization, coaches, you know, players, like I, I enjoyed every second of it. Yeah. Lamar's an awesome dude to be around. Like and he, it's cool because he's so genuine. Yeah. Like he is who he is and like he doesn't care what you think about him. He's not going to change for anybody. Yeah. So it was awesome to kind of be around him. Just his personality wise, everything was fun. Everything mm-hmm. was, you know, yeah. light. But at the same time, like there, he was the most locked in person. He turns it on. Yeah. Like, We'd be in a walkthrough, and he's he'd be off joking with someone, and then the second the play call comes in, it was like flips the switch, yeah. and he's locked in like to his read keys, like getting yeah. everyone together. You know, you do the walkthrough play, everyone comes back, and then he's immediately like passing the ball around, yeah. joking again, <laughs> yeah. like. So how he it was cool to see how he was able to do all that. That's what. And like my rookie year was the year he was he got like MVP yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, he he's a special player. That, yeah, you know, he'll be in the league for a while doing what he does. No doubt. How, how is Harbaugh? What's he like? Uh, intense. Yeah. As, if I could sum it up in one word, it'd be intense. Really? But, like, he's the type of coach, like, super competitive. Yeah. Like, he works out every day. And, you know, he'll really? get, he'll probably get multiple <laughs> workouts in a day. Like, he's yeah. always come in early and work out with the strength coach. But then, like, you know, players got your scheduled workout times. He would maybe pop back in to yeah. do a couple sets. He's the, he, like, if you're doing a set with, you know, 45s or whatever uh-huh. he would purposely just grab the 50s just yeah. to do like even if he did like two reps and then he sat down to like beat you yeah <laughs> like trying to do that. Yeah. and you know meanwhile you're like f- from doing a whole workout you're dead and yeah. he's just talking crap to you trying to get it get you a little bit yeah. more motivated but i i loved it i love being with him he, he's a great coach and you know 
enjoy playing from. It was it was intense. It was something that yeah. you had to show up ready to go. Every that's day. That's a that's a good organization to like get drafted to. Like good stability. Yeah. And like no, it was a good cool. place to and start it was your career. Good place to be at and it was nice that it was just far enough from home that like Yeah, but close for close like enough that like yeah. I could drive back if I needed to. Yeah. Like even when like Casey was teaching, I can get back to you know, yeah. a weekend here and there. Like it was easy enough to do yeah. that. And then but it was far enough away that like I didn't have <laughs> yeah. like the whole hometown distraction like, distraction yeah. and all that type of yeah. stuff. So I, I liked it a lot out there. What was that uh the Steelers game like on uh when you came in after after uh, Oh the Lamar. one that got postponed like eight yeah. times because yeah, of COVID. the COVID game? Yeah. 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 That was so that whole because I was, actually had COVID leading up to that. Yeah. So I was out we played like the Titans, I think, before that. So mm-hmm. I like tested positive before the Titans game. So I was out for that. And then after the Titans game was when like the outbreak happened. Okay. Like yeah. I think we had like 30 guys or something like <laughs> yeah. that. So that game kept getting moved. And as it kept getting moved, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm like doing the math in my head. Like, mm-hmm. all right, I get out of like the quarantine like this day. Mm-hmm. Like I'm kind of hoping they could push it back like yeah. another day or two. Yeah. So I could play. So like they ended up pushing it back. I think it was like a Wednesday game and I got mm-hmm. off the list on Monday. Okay. So like Monday was the day I was able to come back in. And they were at that point they were just doing walkthroughs and mm-hmm. everyone had to be spaced out and wear a mask. <laughs> like it was the protocols at that yeah. point were insane. So finally like we get finally we play that game on Wednesday. And like I didn't even know still if I was cleared to play. Mm-hmm. Cause like I they made you do all these tests, Dude, like, like the heart, heart tests testing, and all yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. So no one told me that I failed it. So I figured like that's a yeah. good sign. Yeah. But I get into the locker room and I look at the quarterback coach. I'm like, hey, am I just want to come. I'm suiting mm. up today, right? Like, yeah. it's like, yo, help. like, yeah, you're uh, you're the backup today. Like, no one had told you. Yeah. And I'm like, no one had like confirmed for sure. <laughs> like, I thought that was a plan, but yeah. didn't have the confirmation. And then like we even had we brought up our practice squad quarterback Snoop. Okay. Yeah. And he was because at that time all the practice squad had to travel, but they sat in the box. Okay. So he was up in the box mm. like pregame. Yeah. Because no one had told him that he was suited up either. <laughs> That's funny. So then like. The quarterback coach is calling him, like, dog, where you at? Like, yeah. we need you. And he's like, coach, no one told me I was suiting up. I'll be down in like a minute. Dude. Like, I'm down there right now. <laughs> we gotta get the communication all yeah. better on this. So, path. but like, that's the that's the part that was kind of crazy. But then once you got into it, it was just yeah. just the game. And then like RG three, you got he yeah. kind of came up lame, like with his hamstring a little bit. And yeah, you get thrown in there. <laughs> yeah, just got tossed in there. And, yeah, yeah, it was able to. You threw a touchdown, right? Yeah, had through to a touchdown that Marquis to Hollywood Brown. on the yeah. sideline. Yeah, but yeah, so that was that was cool that I could get like the first in-game action, yeah. like against and at the time Steelers defense was really good. All the guys they have, and yeah. So that was that was cool to be able to get out there and actually in such a big game too, yeah, like the Steelers game. Ravens. Yeah, that rivalry aspect yeah. of it. So that was that was cool. That was for me just like a moment to, all right, yeah. go have success, even if it's just a little bit. Yeah. In that game just to be able to go out and show that you know you can do it yeah and for sure. more just showing everyone else like i knew i could but yeah it was being able to put it on tape and yeah, have it out there that's right. to see no, it was a big time play i remember that that i remember watching that game it was i remember yeah. just so many people called me because that made us cover like the spread oh okay. so, so yeah, yeah. Were like thank you like, yeah, like, Dude, I, like I could care less about your spread <laughs> i love it that's funny how, how was uh this past season being in in with the cardinals like what was you got you, so you were talking about the story like how you got there but mm-hmm. when, when did you what what week was it i so i all know is it was thanksgiving thanksgiving okay yeah so and that so was you weren't there so it wasn't you weren't in arizona so i know games. arizona was on a buy that week yeah so like i got in it was like monday of thanksgiving week and that was the week they were on the buy so we had like a couple meetings or something and i think wednesday we were able to like go home yeah. so it actually kind of worked out that i was able to get in get a few meetings get my playbook and all yeah. that type, meet everybody but then i was able to fly back to do like Thanksgiving, I was yeah. able to like, I did Thanksgiving with Casey's family, saw her one more time, cause she was already home. Yeah. And then went back home, like Friday, was able to actually like, pack my stuff up, get ready yeah. to come out here for the rest of the season. But it was awesome, like being able to come in here, uh, granted season didn't end how we wanted to I was gonna say, to like, I think time. when you got there, everything went downhill. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it wasn't my fault. I, wasn't <laughs> out there. I had nothing to do with that. But uh, no, yeah, so it was, you know, at the time we were, I think number one seed in the yeah. NFC, like everything was Things looking were good. Rolling. Yeah. yeah, everything was rolling. K1 was just coming back off of, he had yeah, like a little ankle injury. So he, it was his first game back. 
you know, we're going to play the Bears, and we won that game. It was like, all right, everything's going to yeah. roll, and then the wheels fell off and ended up how yeah. it did. But I loved it out here. Like, every second being out here was it was awesome. Yeah. Like, guys on the team were cool. Like I said, Cliff was a great coach to play for, and how his offense is – even just for the little bit of time that I was there, I felt yeah. like I had learned, like, my knowledge expanded so much yeah. more just because it's a different system. He's coaching a little bit differently. Yeah. And then you're know, seeing how he goes about meetings and everything. And it was, I enjoyed every second of being yeah. here. I'm excited about what we got coming yeah. back. It's uh like, it was such a dis- disappointing ending, but I was yeah. talking to a couple people, like if you would have said in the beginning of the season that, you know, like told them how the season was going to go, they uh-huh. probably would have taken it at the beginning of the season, like making the playoffs. Like yeah, that, all the fans would have been happy. We back, <laughs> yeah. is like, all right, if you look at, you know, any team when obviously you get to the start of the season, yeah. every team's goal is to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. So there's 31 teams that are disappointed at the yeah, end of the year. for sure. But then, you know, you look back at what you're actually able to accomplish. Like, you know, you made, your team that made the playoffs, you know, a few years ago, it was yeah. a new head coach, number one overall pick. Sure. Like, yeah. you know, and then where they've been able to come in three short years, yeah. making the playoffs. And at the time, they for a while, they were – number one team in the NFL. I think they're sure, undefeated yeah. the longest and everything. Kill so yeah. they were killing it early on. So that's kind of where it gives you a lot of excitement for yeah. what we can build around. And we were able to actually retain a lot of the core guys. That sure, yeah. Looking forward to getting getting back with everyone and kind of moving this whole train forward yeah. again. Now, your, your boy Kyler's trying to get paid now. He's trying to get his new deal. He's got got business, business, goes. business, business, is, <laughs> business is business. I love it. So. Well, we always had a coach that do business, business being done. So yeah. that's kind of like, you know, things pop up. Nature of the game. Hey, yeah. you got to handle your business and everyone handles it their own way. So, yeah, I mean, things get worked out how they're supposed For to. For sure. Yeah. What's it, what's like the, <clears throat> a big difference between like the college game and NFL from like a, you know, I was talking to a couple, uh, when I was doing, I was talking to um, Kabinda and Amani and mm-hmm. they were saying that like the NFL feels like a little like lonelier than, than college. Feels, it definitely like, does. Because it's just a little more like you're more spaced out in age with guys. Yeah, you're are, spaced out in age with yeah. it. But I mean, even like everyone lives in a different spot. Like yeah. in college, you finish up like you're either going back to the dorms, like we're going back to Nittany Apartments yeah. or we're going to the retreat where pretty much all those pl- places where there were guys that were living yeah. there. And the retreat, then man. You all, yeah, the retreat was a great spot. <laughs> but then even, like, you always had roommates with you. So, yeah. like, in apartments, you had three other roommates that you're hanging yeah. out with. And more often than not, the apartment right next to you was another group of players that yeah. you're hanging out with. So, it's definitely, like, just the aspect of, you know, you're by yourself for a lot of the time. And having, yeah. being able to take advantage of, like, the free time was something that, like, I realized is there's a ton more free time yeah. with the NFL. And it's not like... You might be able to go grab dinner with guys once yeah. or twice a week, but a lot of these guys got kids, families. For like, sure. They got a wife that's been taking yeah, care of stuff. Like, they got to yeah. get back to, like, yeah. real adult, like, yeah. real life stuff. Yeah. And not just college homework and, <laughs> you know, where can I spend my meal for tonight? Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So, but it, 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 that was different. That was probably the biggest adjustment I had to make was yeah. getting used to that. You know, being, Especially not, being not, not having Casey here either. Like, she's at Yeah, home, and, you know, know, not, you know, yeah. having my fiance with me or, yeah. you know, and now even, like, being on the other side of the country from everything that yeah. I've known before. But yeah, like I said, just taking advantage of the free time the right way through yeah. like recovery or film work, whatever. Like that's yeah. being able to spend that time the right way. Gotta be a pro. <laughs> Figure Pro's it out one pro. way or the other. Yeah. If you don't, you're cutting your house. Sure. So. <laughs> yeah. It's a brutal business. Yeah. Um, the one thing I was, I, I want to ask you was about like the whole talk in the NFL around like, yeah, uh, and just football in general about like quarterback height, like mm-hmm. being too short to be a quarterback. Now you see it like with, it's you know a little more trendy now to be a shorter quarterback. Like you know, yeah. like, but I want to like, do you think that's like over hyped? Like that 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 being a big deal? Like with like being able to see over the linemen? Like, do you think it's yeah. over talked about? Or do you think it's actually something? I that think people, I some, think it does get over hyped a little bit because yeah. like even the tallest quarterbacks are. Six four, six yeah. five, maybe. Lyman are six six. So, yeah, six six. So they like even like standing back there, you still mm-hmm. can't clearly see over your mm-hmm. six six tackle or you know six eight. Like some yeah. of these dudes are massive. Yeah. And then so you still can't see clearly over it, and even at six six. So, yeah. and I think even now like, you start looking at it like there's so much of having just to find the throwing lane, like yeah. by moving or I mean, you see Mahomes with, like all his sidearm, yeah. Aaron Rodgers, like that's kind of be not. I don't want to say like sidearms a trendy thing, but yeah. you're starting to see that a little bit more because that's how guys are starting. You're learning that all right, I can't see over the six yeah. foot eight guy. 
And yeah. he's blocking the guy that's 6'8", trying to jump up and block a pass. Yeah. Like you got to find a way around it. Everyone wants the creator at quarterback now. Exactly. And not just like the pocket And that, yeah. that's something that's starting to become a little bit more like those guys that – Tom Brady's obviously still killing it. Yeah. But those guys that are staying in the pocket, even you've seen Tom Brady now, like yeah. get a little bit more loose than you expected him to. Yeah, get, for sure. Get, <laughs> yeah. You know, a nice eight-yard run here it. and there. Yeah. But, so it's starting to become a part of the game that, like you say, copycat league. Like yeah. they start to see success and you can start to realize like, if I got a guy that can move around, like now my run game of, opens up. Stuff, There's yeah. different aspects of the game that opens up, and now defenses have to play a little bit differently. Yeah, so for sure. There's all that aspect of it that kind of goes into it. That I, I think the whole hype aspect and yeah. it gets it Media gets overblown likes to talk about a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who do you think goes first in the draft tomorrow? Overall, or? I mean, this is going to come out before uh, after the draft. But who do you think goes first at quarterback? Uh, at quarterback. I, honestly, I think Kenny does. Yeah. I, I feel did, like... That's who I had in my mock draft. Yeah, I, th- I think Kenny does. He's yeah. kind of that guy that's... I mean, it seems like everywhere I see it's a toss between him or Malik Willis. Yeah. So one or the yeah. other, but... I, th- I think so, it's so be different, the two of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so could be more Completely opposite. different styles. Yeah. Like, yeah. Malik's that guy that, you know, is... You can create a little bit more, like... Yeah. And Kenny's that guy that's seasoned, like, experienced. You know what you're going yeah. you know to get. He's, you know... From yeah. all these mock drafts and analysts yeah. I see and read, I, don't, I haven't like studied the guy. Yeah, but, no, but, <laughs> but I'm no, just watching his film. Just watching, I'm just watching him play on Saturdays when yeah. I'm at the house. Yeah, but I mean, I, you know, I've Kenny can throw the ball really well. I've worked out with him a handful of times, and yeah. he, he's a good dude to be around. So, yeah. I, and I do think Kenny will go first. Yeah, no, like I said, this will, this will definitely come out after the draft. So we'll see yeah. see if you and I were right yeah. on that one. Yeah. Well, it'll be real right or real wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> um, Dude, you ever think about NIL and how much money we yes. you, you would have made yeah. at Penn State? It sucks. <laughs> missed, we missed out completely. You probably made a quarter it. million dollars, bro. I think you probably would have made two hundred, two fifty during your career, maybe more. I mean, seeing what some these, more. seeing what some of these guys are doing, like having yeah, way if more, I had it the actually. whole time, like that was disrespectful by me. You would have made way more yeah, than that. Way, way more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might have made more, more than, than two fifty now. Yeah, probably. Some of these guys are making, jeez. Yeah. But. uh yeah, no, the, the whole thing. NIL, because, like, the class I came in, we completely missed out on it. Yeah. Because I think they still had the NCAA game when you, when you came in, right? Yeah. So yeah. you got, like, I'm a old, residual yeah. check. Yeah. I did. I got, like, I, got, I, got, I got in the mail one time, like, three, four thousand. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't think, a ton from, of money, from, but a little from bit. From the game, yeah. So they stopped making it the year I was coming in. Yeah. So I completely so missed out on that. Yeah. And then it was, like, the year, what, I've been in league. So two years after I leave, yeah. they're – all right, players can go make their own money. Yeah. And I just completely missed out on everything. I know. Uh, and being Penn State's starting it was, quarterback. So, was, like, one of the things that, like, while I was there, I really realized, like, this sucks, yeah. is the first year we did the uh, the throwback jerseys mm-hmm. that Penn State, because everyone, the, yeah. you know, with black shoes, basic blues, yeah. and never changed. They That's sold it thing. after the jersey? No, so how, because the school and the board wasn't really budging, so I guess how Franklin was able to, pitch it so they would agree would be all right we'll auction those jerseys off generate some revenue for the school and yeah you know at the very least it'll pay for the jerseys themselves yeah. and so they literally like we chased them down i think pancos might have still got away with his yeah how he does i believe it yeah. um but so they chased us down i tried to like throw it in my bag mm-hmm. and they just came knocking like the next day. Like, I showed bet, up yeah. to our lift and they're like, Yeah, no, we need that back. Yeah. It's like, I don't got it. Like, I gave it back. It's like, We know we don't have yours. <laughs> like, we need it. So, like, all right, fine. I like was talking to my mom, like, Please, like, if you can get it in the auction, yeah, like, buy my dress. Buy it. Like, you don't have to give me like a Christmas present for the rest of my life. Like, that's yeah. the only thing I want. And the price was too high. My mom's like, I, I can't do it. Yeah. Like, I'm not spending, I think it went for like, you know, a few grand or whatever. Really? But. Jeez. I think well, Saquon's went for like upwards of ten, fifteen. I, I think. believe it. Jeez. And they were because they said the double numbers. So I think the other twenty six probably still went for like seven grand. I bet because someone yeah. could just like I don't right, pass it off as his jersey. No double numbers. Difference. You're right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. The two twenty six. So like that was like for me it was like this yeah. is this is not so like I should be able to one either keep my jersey or yeah you know get p- paid or, for or get some money or for I it. see how much is getting yeah. paid for like. Give me a hundred bucks. Let me go eat. Literally. Yeah, right. <laughs> let me let me go have a nice That's meal. That's a crazy thing. Yeah, it, college football's got so many. It's just a crazy time in college football. Yeah. NIL, you got the transfer portal. Oh, yeah, transfer portal now is insane. Yeah, because the transfer portal probably wasn't. Was that in effect when you were in college, though? 
Probably I think my, going into my last, last year, year was yeah. the first year. It was yeah. kind of a thing. But at that same time, like, people didn't know how to like utilize it. Yeah. They're trying to figure it out. And now they're starting to figure it out. And, yeah. You know, teams are yeah. – Look into the transfer portal as like that's part of their recruiting. And now they're getting paid. To, but now, you know, now, get now, paid. Coaches are making, you know, coaches mm-hmm. are leaving in a heartbeat. It's like yeah. someone, there's a mess in college yeah. football. It'll be interesting to see like how it all plays out there. Yeah. Because so, it's not going to stay the same. Like something's going to no, happen. They're talking about like maybe the like NCAA. power conference. Or, yeah. You know, the NCAA won't even like be in charge anymore. It's going to be like yeah. conferences in charge. And like, set the conferences in charge. You, like there was a whole talk about a super conference and yeah. even like get the top say 50 teams like all get together yeah. and all right we'll do our own league we'll play each other and yeah well, they, well, like with the nil stuff it's there's got to be like um like in the nfl at least you have like a salary cap and like it's all kind of yeah. like with nil it's just like yeah you would free there, for all. you would think at some point yeah either the ncaa will step in and be like all right there's this is How the allotment yeah. like yeah. you know each team gets uh, whatever yeah 10 million dollars yeah know, let's say that's crazy. and then they got to split it up amongst their team or recruits or whatever, yeah. but, or the NCAA is just going to hope it all fails. And yeah. then, you know, those, yeah. <laughs> there, there will still be the need for the NCAA. For sure. Yeah. So, but if they don't, I do think it'll, there's a chance it goes to like a super conference. And some, yeah. once someone takes control of it yeah. and can, all right, put rules in and logistics for it and see what happens. Yeah. But it's, I'm glad I'm not so crazy. <laughs> dealing with that yeah. anymore. No, it's nuts. No, no me too. I'm, yeah, well, God. even like coaches now nuts. trying to deal with it. Like, oh my God, they're just trying to navigate. So, it. There's a lot of coaches like getting out of coaching because like yeah, college coaching because it's just can't a mess. Deal with it. Yeah, because yeah. like you got to recruit your own roster harder than you recruit. Yeah, you got to keep them now because like yeah. other guys like you know like at, I just heard there's a dude that left that left ASU who like is just got like half a million bucks to go transfer to another school. Like mm-hmm. that, I was just one of the coaches was just telling me like. You know, it's just like they're just like poaching kids out of out of schools. And well, even like, transfer. I feel like so many people think like, all right, grass is always greener, yeah. and they jump in the transfer portal and that too. The, kid, not, the kids that aren't getting there's paid, not yeah. getting they're not, not getting spots. picked up. Yeah. But then because like coaches need to keep their players, and yeah. someone leaves, like they can't guarantee that spot will be open because they sure. got to go fill it. Yeah, it's great. So then kid ends up in like a, yeah. a weird spot and no, got nice. nowhere to play. Um, yeah, what a weird what a weird world. The one thing that uh, fans always like to hear, like guys talk about on the podcast, is like investment stuff and like yeah. what you're doing financially and like mm-hmm. g- give us a uh, like a like. So you probably have a financial advisor, right? Yeah. Does any like cool investments or anything you're getting into? Like, uh, nothing yet, but I'm starting to look. Yeah. Uh, property, real estate, something that I'm starting to look into. Yeah, is something that I just feel like that's very sta- not necessarily stable but like yeah but it's it's pretty it's a pretty yeah. good investment to try and diversify like right now i've just been a bunch of like stock market yeah type stuff just you know I'm not a very risky person so i'm not <laughs> yeah. i'm not out here trying to find like you know yeah. diamonds in the rough and put everything on it but yeah um i want to diversify a little bit so like real estate something and then uh i want to start looking at like maybe some like small businesses or something yeah. like that that franchise opportunity or something that i can maybe you know, just be able to kind of like spread myself out a little bit, diversify yeah. and try and, you know, make my money work for me. Yeah, no, you definitely should. I mean, there's so many opportunities too. like, we were talking the other day, like you have access as an athlete, to like mm-hmm. so many different deals and people that like you, yeah. that like once you retire and you haven't played for five years, like you stop getting that access, yeah. you know? No, yeah, for sure. Like people trying, stop picking up your trying calls. Trying to use it while, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, trust me, people don't answer mine anymore. <laughs> That's the last year. Yeah, yeah. You no, still, you you still mayor of Harrisburg, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I no, can't yeah. get I can't get Mike to answer my calls. Get sick. Well, that's Mike. You know, that's just Mike <laughs> thinking he's better. Than me. Yeah, he gets the franchise tag. And <laughs> yeah, he gets, gets yeah. a little bit of jingle yeah. in his pocket. And he he's better than everyone. Ten million a year. Yeah, yeah crazy. Not bad to be him. No. no. Oh my God. No. Yeah. That's brutal. Um, let's talk about your uh, your claim to fame, the TikTok song. That is, I, that I, is my I, number one. When, thing I, to when fame. I walked in here, I was singing it. I was, yeah, and you, you really walked in. I heard you humming it, and then, <laughs> like I said, it gets stuck in your head. So and even as, before sitting down here, it's like playing in my yeah. head. Yeah. What What was that like when you first heard that song, or when you uh, first realized that it had? I, think I mean, I heard the song. Had like 10 million TikTok views in like two two hours or something. Yeah, like that. it blew up. <laughs> I, the The dude made the song back in college so like yeah. i'd heard it and like oh she'd heard it before i'd heard it before yeah. and you know everyone had, on the team had heard it but yeah. it didn't blow up so i kind of got like the whole you know hey this is funny like yeah. a little kind of catchy song whatever but then yeah it was what like a year and a half ago two years now that 
someone made the TikTok, like Madden with you know that as a song yeah. and it just blew up. And I got like, I didn't have TikTok or anything like that at the time. So I remember I woke up and I had, it was a Snapchat message from okay. dude that I hadn't talked to since high school. <laughs> and he's like, yo, check this out. This is hilarious. And I, I thought it was funny. I yeah. you know, responded with laughing emoji or whatever, yeah. but that was the end of it. I thought that'd be the end <laughs> of it. And then as we're going through practice and I get back, I'm sitting in my locker again, and my phone's just blowing up. Yeah. Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and then I open it up and everyone's sending it to me. I'm getting little kids are commenting on all my, like every yeah. lyric on my Instagram. I'm like, <laughs> what in the hell? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Why is this a thing? And it just blew up from there. Like, I think like my followers went up like a hundred thousand, like yeah. literally like that day. That was crazy. And I was like, well, everyone saw it. Yeah. yeah, everyone saw it. And then now like I was out in, I spent most of my summers out in Jersey mm. at like, you know, at the beach and I'm working out and I'm on a field and they kind of had like a little kids, like camp little yeah. thing going on, on the other side. And I hear these little kids just singing the song, like yelling it across the field. Mm -hmm. And like, those kids definitely know me more from that song <laughs> than they do. Cause they're too young to have like yeah. experienced me like at Penn State. Yeah. Like they know me from that song, which is mm -hmm. hilarious, but take it while I can. No, it's funny. I was talking to someone and uh, one of the people I work with, like doing this uh, podcast stuff. And I was telling them like, yeah, I think I, we could do a podcast with Trace McSorley. And I was like, explain like, I was like, yeah, he played at Penn State, like now plays for the company. Like, dude, we know Trace McSorley. Like, he's the <laughs> TikTok guy. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the TikTok guy. <laughs> that's that's the people know me now. Which is, I gotta, I gotta make that more <laughs> give back. I mean, I don't want to be the TikTok guy. I'll right? take it. Like, yeah, take I, ain't what you get, mad, yeah. I ain't gonna be mad at it, but. Yeah, that's funny. What, um, what are some of the, uh, like, Penn State's upcoming football season? What, what are you, got some expectations for him? Like, do you still watch um, a lot of your stuff? I would like I watch it when I can. Yeah. Like, usually we got Clifford's like, in his last year. Yeah, yeah Cliff's yeah. in his last year, and like yeah. I know Cliff pretty well. Obviously, like, yeah. was with him for a few years. Like I'll still talk to him when I go back to Cambridge. Yeah. Like he'll you know still call me every now and then, talk to him, just yeah. you know, shoot shoot it around shoot it, yeah. and talk. But uh, no, yeah, he's a. Uh, I think they'll be good. I mean, it seems like every year there's got a lot of hype to it, and yeah, you know, you look at how they were playing last year. Early in the season, they were lights out. They were rolling. Like, they were yeah. rolling big yeah. time. So then, as long as you know, I think if Cliff can stay healthy, and you know, sounds like he had a really good spring, and they've got yeah. a couple young guys that might be able to step up and play well. Yeah. If they can do that, then I think they got a shot. No, yeah. for sure. Yeah, like I said, no one gave us a shot in 2016. See what for we did. So <laughs> yeah. all it takes is like them catching the you know the wave at yeah. the right time and getting hot and. You know, just going from there. Our boy, uh, our boy coach Franklin just got his bag too. He did. He just, got he, he just keeps re upping every few years. <laughs> it's crazy. Good for him, man. He's yeah. he's got it. He's got it figured out there. He's making some. Serious Especially money. like this year was a good time. Where there's all the talk about him going to the like USC or yeah, true. A yeah. lot of talk with him and yeah. you know other other jobs around the country. So I think yeah. it was it was good for him to kind of be able to get that stability for himself and the program. Yeah. Dude. And just being able to get them to like I went back a few weeks ago. You yeah. went back too, right? Yeah, I was there. The I think the weekend before you. Yeah, crazy. Like, they yeah. completely wiped out the weight room. Yeah, there. brand new. That place is yeah. gonna be sick. Even yeah. like the whole players' lounge, like they got now. They got Sweet. a golf yeah. simulator. Dude, in there. it was so bad like, when back we were when there. We were there. I think we had, <laughs> it was so bad. We had those busted up couches <laughs> that were like tore up. Like God knows it, it took a black light to them. What was on them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was so. <laughs> gross. It, the only like game console we had was someone brought in like an N sixty four from yeah. home and like plugged it up to a TV. Uh, yeah, it was not the best. The old facility. busted up like pool yeah. table with like the, like the pool cues didn't you have like the little felt on top? You're just hitting with like just you know the. They were saving cue. some money around the program. Yeah, so it was. Uh, are you, are you uh you guys so close, Frank? You and Franklin? Like, yeah, so you guys were close during your career. Yeah, right? we're close in yeah. my career, and like, I'll still. I'll talk to him, reach out to him every now and then. Yeah. I was actually able to like got dinner with him when I went back yeah. a few weeks ago. I was able to, and then that was cool to actually like, sit down and like yeah. catch up with him as opposed to like yeah. usually like, when I first got yeah. in, I was trying to come say what's up. He's running around the meetings the yeah. entire time. Like yeah. so I popped in, he was doing like a recruiting meeting. I was able to yeah. pop in and say what's up for like literally five minutes. Yeah. Talk to him. But then, so being able to have dinner with him and like sit down and talk to him was cool. Yeah, that's what you uh you get married soon. Yeah, next March. Yeah. yeah. It's exciting. It is. Are you, yeah. are you ready for that? It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. Right? Time coming. Yeah. I think it's about time, but I feel like even like when it gets down to it, it's going to be like a, yeah. a moment where I'm going to realize the magnitude of it. Yeah. But now I'm looking forward to it. it it's, it'll be exciting. It's, it's going to be a fun time. I just want to enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. She's been there through, Casey's been there through 
your whole career, like all the ups and downs. Yeah, I mean, we started <laughs> like we met like my freshman year. Yeah. We kind of we were friends first, and then we kind of had like started hanging out a little bit, yeah. and then it, you know whatever reason that kind of like fizzled out, and then yeah. you know she went and got a, another boyfriend. And I, was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like sick about it, so then. Like, like you were in your bag. She, you were yeah. <laughs> second she like was single, I was like right there. I like I, I got to be there. Like whenever she breaks up with this dude, so. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, she's been there through it all, and she was supportive me the entire way, and yeah. it's it's been awesome to have her with me, kind of through the through that entire journey of everything. So, and uh, no, I'm Sweet. looking forward to it. You gotta get her out here in Arizona, man. She'll I know love. she she was She'll gonna like come out here. last year when like we were gonna have home playoff game. Yeah. But she like she's teaching, so yeah. she can't get like get time off of school yeah. or he has to, it's a whole thing to do that. So she's got like weekends. So we were looking at that first playoff game was yeah. like, she was going to, I think it was like Martin Luther King weekend. Okay. So she was going to have yeah. like a day off for school. She could take Friday off, make like a four day weekend and everything. Yeah. But then, you know, we don't have a home game. Yeah. And <laughs> kind of screws yeah. It up. yeah. No, but uh, no, it's, I'm looking they, forward things to Things didn't it. quite go as planned there. <laughs> no, it didn't. But no, it's, She'll get out here eventually. Yeah. She, she, I mean, the last time she was out here was for the Fiesta Bowl when we were playing. That's right. Here. I always forget that you guys were all out here. Yeah. That. So yeah. that was. Where, where'd you guys go? Bottle Blonde? Is that yeah, Bottle Blonde, Blonde was the we were too. There was some other. Bottle Blonde was the main spot we were yeah. at. But there was, there was some club we went to. I, honestly, I don't even remember the name I of love it. it. But yeah, no, it was, that was my first experience with Scottsdale. And that was yeah. a hell of a time. What? A, <laughs> yeah. Scottsdale's a special place, man. Yeah. It's not a, not a bad place to live. What um, when you're done playing football, what what's the what what's Trace gonna do? What 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 are the plans? Um, I mean, I've always thought like coaching would yeah. kind of be something that I've always had that passion. typical quarterback. Yeah, answer. typical quarterback <laughs> stuff. Like, just kind of always had that passion for like yeah. just the X's and O's of the game, mm. and feel like I, I see the game pretty well, and yeah. I've been around a lot of really successful people, Coach Franklin, Moorhead, Ronnie, just yeah. Joe Brady, and yeah. even now like. Bill is a Billy's a OC or a quarterback coach. coach yeah. The OC I had in Baltimore was uh he'll probably end up first OC not sorry the quarterback coach I had in Baltimore. Yeah. He'll probably have an opportunity for an OC job coming up and yeah. obviously being around Greg Roman and Harbaugh like coaches I've been around and I've been able to soak up so much of that stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, I feel like I've learned a lot from them. I can utilize that. Uh, yeah. But so that and uh, just broadcast. You know, yeah. analysts doing talking heads stuff. On TV, like, yeah. I feel like th- along that same path, I feel yeah. like I could I could speak about the game pretty well and yeah. um, be able to you know impart my knowledge to yeah. the rest of the world. Do the Dan or <laughs> Dan Orlowski, Yeah, you know, be able stuff. to get on and you know, be able to because there's so much that goes into the no quarterback position yeah. or you know X's and O's of the game that you're sitting back and you know watching on Sundays. You got yeah. a course light in your hand. You're not thinking about yeah. You know what's this boundary safety doing, or yeah. how does this front associate with coverage? Like th- mm-hmm. that type of stuff is where I think you you learn that stuff. You really get into the X's and O's of it, where the game's pretty. It's pretty awesome to yeah, be able to like, sure. see how it all. Corners. And the fans love hearing it; they just don't know it. Yeah. yeah. And most media people can't talk about that. Yeah. You know, they don't know anything. There's, about I mean, there's like you said, there's a lot of pretty good. Yeah, yeah. There's a handful now. There's starting to be more and more of those yeah. guys that you know these networks want guys that can talk about it, talk yeah. about the game and. You know, as they're going, even, you know, doing the uh, color commentary, like yeah. during a game, being yeah. able to, you know, you see a play, a replay comes up, well, yeah. and be able to talk about what happened yeah. in that last play, what he was seeing, how he, what the quarterback saw, or, yeah. you know, how the O-line was doing their, their mic point and protection, yeah. like that type of stuff is, that's the stuff that I think is really cool, and you don't get when you're just yeah. sitting there, you're watching the game for the joy of it. For sure. Yeah, it's a... Uh... I think it'd be great, man. You gotta do a, maybe we can do a joint podcast together when you're when you're in the yeah. You want to uh, sit down, in ten years, pull up yeah. some film, yeah. break, break down, break it down. You. Yeah. you can yeah. break down that uh, your f- touchdown against Wisconsin, that roll <laughs> the out, seventy yard, roll the seventy yard, <laughs> catch it, split yeah. it, and go. Hack through it so hard, I like stumbled over myself, <laughs> and I I basically yeah, I was, dude, every, my first broken tackle. Was a rock oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd be like in the flat. I'd be like, dude, you don't gotta throw it that hard. Well, man. even just like warming up with them. Yeah. I'd be like such a strong arm. I don't want to warm up with you. Yeah. And then it hurts your like, I think it's like it rubbed off on me because then he's zipping them at me and I'm like yeah. trying to zip it back at him. <laughs> right. But oh. no, it was a uh, yeah. No, that dude threw like a rocket. No, he's a stud. 
yeah, it's, it's a shame that he never ended up being able to play a long time in the league. But he's yeah. so, so much talent, so much arm it's talent. So much yeah. talent. And then, like, but the good thing is for him, like he's doing, like he always said he wanted to like coach ball. And, That's the one thing. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he's able to do that yeah. now, and you know he can go out and hunt and yeah. do what it's he all loves like, to do fish all the time. And, yeah, 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 hunt fish. Be, yeah. Be a country boy. That's the thing I always say, like, I always tell, like, young people, too, like, young athletes, like, you got to have something other than, like, football that you want to oh, do. Yeah. You got to have some other aspiration because, like, you never know what's going to end, you know? So it's, like, yeah, it's well, good yeah, thing. You never know what's going to end, but then I feel yeah. like there's an aspect to, like, um, you spend so much time doing something yeah. that you, like, drive yourself nuts. Yeah, for like, sure. you got to have that, something like, else. something yeah. to break out, whether it's, like, you said hunting or yeah. going out and golfing, like, getting those four hours where – yeah. It's just you in the course, and like you're not thinking about For sure. work or film or you know yeah. whatever it is that you do. I think that's just something that everyone needs. Everyone no needs some kind of outlet to just yeah. get away from their day to day life. Yeah. How's the golf game? You just mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Struggling. Yeah. yeah. Went out the other last week, and I think I was shot a 49 on the front. Was feeling good. Yeah. And then I fell apart a little bit on the back. I yeah. think I ended up shooting like a 102. Oh, you got to break 100, man. <laughs> well, I, I've broken a, See, I just can't consistently break 100. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, like bef- the last time before I came out, I was playing in Virginia. I shot like 95. Oh, really? So, like, yeah. I can. That's I a got good the score. ability yeah. to yeah. break 100. I just can't consistently. That's a good it. score, 95. Yeah. I hit a couple putts that I never yeah. hit before, too. Yeah. <laughs> I always say I shoot 90, but that's with like eight mulligans. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you get a bre- every you always get a breakfast ball yeah. first hole. Have to have to do that, and then like I feel like I get screwed over in my games because like I'll hit a drive, but I won't quite. It won't be in the fairway, but it'll be in the rough somewhere, yeah. and I'll lose it there, and then I got to drop. But it's not out of bounds. It's yeah. just I can't find the ball. So, <laughs> so like I feel like there should just be a gentleman's agreement. Yeah, you just drop like, one there. Casual yeah. golf, like yeah. If, if you can't that find that it. shot is not out of bounds, yeah. but for whatever it's. You can't find it. It's in the rough. You yeah. can't find it. You sp- you don't want to drive around for yeah. ten minutes. Just gentlemen just agree with yeah. it. Yeah, it shouldn't be I in agree. this area. Drop one down. You don't need to take a stroke. <laughs> or you just make sure no one's looking and just throw one down. Yeah. Or it's like, <laughs> oh, there it is. Huh? Yeah, I found it. <laughs> I love it. That bro, that's you ever you ever play with Cole? No. That's his golf. That's what he does. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> we'll bet. we'll sit there. Like when we first, he's better now. I yeah. think he, that dude plays all the time. But when he we first started playing together. Mm-hmm. We'd come out and, you know, he would very easily have shot like an eight or nine. He's like, uh, yep, par. I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's a four. Yeah. That, ain't, that ain't how that yeah. works. It's funny how some of the best athletes are like so bad at golf. Like we, we, so we like Mike's just think he's terrible at golf. Like some of the best, yeah. biggest freaks are like, can't It's a completely golf different sport. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm interested to see, like, we're going to do a trip here in a couple weeks. Yeah. I think you're going to play with us, right? Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. And, uh. I think, like, Say's coming out for it. Yeah. I'd love to see how There's he no goes. way he's good, right? I, I'm he's thinking, good at everything, like, though. Yeah, but yeah, that <laughs> dude, like, some yeah. God loves people a little bit more. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's one of them. God but, loved him a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, but like you said, a complete freak athlete. Yeah. But he'd be the type that, like, just when you put a golf club in his hand, like, it doesn't compute. Yeah. Or he'll just come out and hit a 340-yard bomb on the first tee. He's team. such a freak. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I uh, you know, I'm, we, we got to play. I'm excited to yeah, see, no, we'll, see the, we'll uh, see that'll, the game. That'll be a good time while boys are coming. Yeah, in. Mike's coming out. And yeah, Mike's who, coming. Who else coming? Uh, Monty, yeah. Jason, Koa, Trap, Grant, Nick. Trap. We, I haven't seen Trap in forever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess since the mid pen, since the mid pen yeah, bank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, that's always, that's a great tournament. Yeah. No, that's yeah. always fun. That's always fun. I asked uh, when, uh, when I did the podcast with Amani and Jason, I asked them to rank their, uh, favorite Penn State bars okay yeah, give me give me a little top three top three yeah um you gotta I mean number bar one bar blue is my favorite really okay yeah, I love that place sleeper that kind of got popping after I it left did. I think. yeah, yeah. That, that was, I mean yeah. P-Man was like just a popping spot where you go there it's yeah. it's just mayhem yeah you get there <laughs> yeah. like late night yeah. 11 12 o'clock it's just mayhem people <laughs> drinking all day long it's but that was always fun. That was always at the athlete spot. Like, yeah, it was. We, that's where everyone usually went. Yeah. Um, but bar, so was, we'd always we'd usually start at Bar Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, they had those. They called them McDiesels. Yeah. Those pitches. The big blue is it? Oh no, that the giant. No, they, Coke, no yeah. that was the fish bowls. They fish bowls. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. I, I, the first thing I would do is go get one of those, those <laughs> pitcher Jack and Coke. That's how I started. <laughs> and then we'd walk over to P Man. And then you'd be there to about like 1 a.m. And that was yeah. like prime time. You'd just sweep into the day. Yeah. <laughs> like 1 a.m. You'd be drinking for a while. And 
the den's the place you have to have been drinking for a while. You, have get to, in there. Yeah. you gotta go there late night. Right. So that would, that would probably be the third spot. And then another sleeper that I always enjoyed was the first. Yeah. Like not a lot of people went like kind of like a dive bar feel. A huge bit. dive bar yeah. feel, but we kind of go there like on a whim every now and then. Yeah. Every time I went there, I had a blast. Yeah. It's so much fun. That's fun. Your top three was the same as I think Jason and Amani. I think they yeah, had P-Man like, we P- P- one, one, Bar Blue two, Bar Blue two, and then I like the vibe at Bar Blue a little bit better. Like, yeah. P-Man P- P- was always super hectic. I'd always yeah. end up just like sitting there and you know having a beer or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, still enjoying my time, but yeah. like to go take a leak was. A 45 minute adventure. No, no, yeah. No, it was funny. One time, one time we were at P Man, and uh, I don't know if I told you this story or not. Mike tipped the girl, the the wait, the waitress. I tell you this. Mike, Mike tipped the waitress or the bartender. Yeah. Um, Mike Siggy tipped her like two thousand dollars, right? When was so, this? So, well, well, listen to this. So, tipped her <laughs> two thousand dollars, but doesn't like know that he, I, he didn't know he tipped her two thousand dollars. But I'll explain. The next day. Um, this is also the perfect Mike thing to do. So do something like that. It, so it, it was it was like two years ago when we were up there for the Mike got honored at like halftime of the basketball game, oh, and I went okay, with him. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we go out to P Man. The next day, Mike gets a DM on Instagram from this girl, and it's like, oh my god, like you changed my life. Like this will pay for all my books for school. Like all this <laughs> stuff. Thank you so much for for the tip. Mike's like, doing a great deed. He has no idea he did it. Oh, well, well, dude, this gets the story gets way worse. Don't tell me so, yes for it back. Dude. Oh no! <laughs> I swear. He's gonna kill me for telling the story. So, so the girl DMs him, and he says, "Wait, like, what did I do? Like, what? Yeah, like, no, what no. happened?" And she's like, "Oh my god, you tipped me like I forget the exact number. You tipped me like two thousand oh, yeah, dollars." And he was like, amount. "He was like, no, oh my god, I meant to tip you two hundred dollars." I kid you not. We drove back to P Man, and they refunded him the tip, and he gave her two hundred dollars instead. Oh I said, dude, at that point, I think you just gotta eat it. You gotta eat like. Well, you gotta eat it. You gotta you eat the two grams. You can't take eighteen hundred. <laughs> like at that point, it's like, all right, I, I messed up, but cut it in half. Yeah, like, you're a dude. grand. Yeah, dude, how funny oh is that? Oh my god, that poor That's girl. such a Mike story. I know. That poor girl. She thought she was probably doing she cloud nine, was, and then yeah, she yeah. was probably set, and then. <laughs> In Swoops Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so when that happened, I was like, dude, we're not actually going back, right? He's like, no, I didn't I didn't mean to tip her two grand. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so funny. Yeah, I mean, just, he does a, a dinner in Miami and it's like, I know, right? Miami's Miami, yeah, I think it was like, he was on his rookie deal then, so a little, well, but still, even, like, still a lot of money. Miami by itself. Like, For sure. You go anywhere out there, <laughs> two, it's going to be a handful yeah. of money. Yeah. No, it's fun times, man. Fun times yeah. with P, man. I, uh, that place is always yeah, really. I never had a bad night. <laughs> no, never had a bad either. night. We, uh, yeah, we. I, I left Penn State before I was even twenty-one, so I barely even got yeah. to really go out. But but I but I was been back a lot, obviously. Yeah, you, like, yeah, you were always. I always you, find like, a way to come back. Yeah. You, I'd walk into P-Man, you'd just be saying, like, "Yo, what's up?" Yeah. <laughs> like, you still go here? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we'll. Uh, we've been talking for a while, but I want to wrap it up. There's a couple of things that I like to ask at the end of, of some of the guests and to let people get to know you a little bit better. So uh, some interesting questions. So the first one, what's the first 30 minutes of your morning like? First 30 minutes of my morning. I feel like that really tells you a lot about a person. Yeah, you know? so I, usually it's uh, wake up and then I like to just drink as much water as possible yeah. in the morning. Like, I thought you were going to say beer. I was like, no, <laughs> it's, it's not how my morning starts. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, usually it's, you know, get up and yeah. I just, Hydrate. like, I got these big waters. I drink at least half Shout out that. Smart Water. Yeah. Well, should no shout out them. I went and bought that at the grocery store. So. <laughs> I'm trying to get a brand deal with yeah, them. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm open. <laughs> you, know where, you know where to find me. Um, but, yeah, so I, I try to drink as much water as I possibly yeah. can in the morning. And then, because uh, that always just, like, starts my day, right? Mm. And then uh, from there, it's usually just... After that, brush my teeth and yeah. head in breakfast, and kind of depends on what I got that day. Like if we had practice, it's going over the scripts for the day. And yeah. If it's you know a day on my own, like I'll I try and you know, pretty religious person. I try and read read my yeah. Bible in the morning. We've been doing you know some Bible study groups at, with people back home, so you know read a little bit of that. Just try yeah. and try and take that time. And, Try to stay off my phone as much as possible. Yeah, I was gonna is, ask you: Are you like a phone guy in the morning, or you're like you're trying to? Yeah, uh, I it? I try not to be, but it yeah. is tough. Like yeah. especially if I'm sitting there eating breakfast and just yeah. it's really <laughs> so easy scroll. to scroll or something yeah. like that. Or um, so I try not to be, but yeah, I do fall into yeah. it every now and then. No, that's cool. Yeah, it's always I always like the like are you like a 
some people just open up their phone as soon as like rolling in bed. Like, I'm like uh, like roll over and like look at my phone yeah, while I'm like, laying yeah, in bed. So cool. I mean, I, listen, I'm always connected. Saturday, Sundays, when I got nothing going on. Just going through like, TikTok. I'll, my alarm will go off and I'll sit there for 30 minutes. Yeah. Like weekends, I'm, I'm not the best at the I routine, but during the week, I try and like yeah. get myself going the right way. No, you have to. What's uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Best piece. Since you're trying to be inspirational, that. I know that inspired I mean, the youth well, of America. Going through like all the, I've gotten a ton of advice. I've been yeah. fortunate enough to have a lot of people that have kind of helped me along the way. So I'm trying to think of. I mean, the biggest thing that I've I've gotten is just kind of like, and I feel like it just fits everything. You just kind of be where your feet are. Yeah, like it's so I love easy that. to get. That's one of my favorite things. So easy to get caught up yeah. in. You know where, what do I have next week, or yeah. you know I I didn't practice well yesterday. Like it's it's so easy to get caught up in you know just life. Yeah. And being able to just focus on the now and yeah. you know try and make today the best you can and you know control. You know they kind of go to control what you can control. Like yeah. there's so much of kind of my journey that's been out of my hands. Like you yeah. said, people have always looked at me as an underdog or mm. you know not able to. I could I, for at first I couldn't play quarterback in college and I wasn't going to get drafted. Like there was so much of that. Yeah. All I could do during all that stuff was, you know, work as hard as I could, mm -hmm. prepare myself for whatever opportunity came. And then when the opportunity came, take advantage of it. And so yeah. I think be where your feet are and control what you can control. Like that's probably the biggest thing for like just my story. And yeah, the biggest I love thing that. that's helped me move along. I love that. No, those are so good. And it's, I always, it's, it is funny. And I, I told him this when I was talking to him a couple months ago, like, Coach Franklin's like core values and the things he dude, says. Dude, I like, use those all the time. Me too, dude. And like they're so corny when you're there. Oh my god. Like you're yeah. like, why? Like this is so. The corny. fact that during a team meeting you have to stand up and recite them in front <laughs> yeah. of the whole team and which one meant the most yeah. to you. Like yeah, at that time it was so corny, but like I've done a few like you know talking to some businesses yeah. and talking to. The, I spoke at like my high school graduation. I use those hundred. Yeah, I use them all the time too. Oh, I've yeah. given speeches on them. Too. Oh, dude, they're like and yeah. they just apply to everything yeah. and then, like they do like. They work. Yeah. Like was positive, positive attitude, attitude, great work ethic. Great work ethic, compete in everything you do and must be willing to sacrifice. That's gonna yeah. be like they really might as well be on my tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. In me. Literally. But yeah, no, they like those work. And like you said, like you can yeah. use those. They apply to every aspect of life. Yeah, no, they really do. Yeah, it's it's uh just always comes back to and then he always talked about too, like control the controllable. Yeah. And like that's always something throughout my career too, even like with my knee injury, mm -hmm. like I always like. There's, yeah, there's that type of stuff you just can't control. Yeah, you just like, and there's no sense in like. I feel like early in my career, I used to worry about everything that you that you can't control. Like, I used to be worried about like, is the weather going to be bad at practice today? Like, so I'm going to drop mm -hmm. a ball. Like, what's the guy? Like, you know, when I was a freshman at Penn State. Like, how's Kyle Carter or Jesse James practicing today? Yeah. Like, am I going to, you know, like all the when you're young, yeah, you start, you're especially like, when you're competing with someone. Yeah, you're like, like worried about all this dumb stuff. You see one like. like <clears throat> Even when I was going through the competition with Tommy, it was like, yeah. all right, he makes a throw, then. Oh, yeah, he just made I, a great throw. Yeah, oh, no. I got to try and go do yeah. that. And then I try and force something and yeah. get you know, knocked down or yeah. I make a bad read. And like, that's just like those things just like kept showing up over. If I, yeah. if I start focusing on other people, then, you know, it's you're trying For to sure. do too much or here or there. It's just I don't perform to my best. Yeah. And that's like you said, just. Do everything you can, perform as well yeah. as you can, and everything else take care of yourself. For sure, for sure. What uh, what's your why? I feel like, and I'll yeah. preface that with like, I think, I think anyone who's like achieved such a high level of success, like that you've achieved NFL, like there has to be some kind of like motivation that's bigger than just yourself and bigger yeah. than bigger than you know, yeah, just like there has to be some external motivation that like what's the what what's your why? What's the reason that you grind all the time? Yeah. And, and so I mean, I think. Do? I, it's hard to say, like, I kind of have two, yeah. almost one would be my family. Mm -hmm. um, just, they supported me through everything. I always wanted to, even when I was younger, like, I realized how much they were doing for me. Like, I had, you know, hopefully one day I still can, like, you know, give my parents, like, the house they want to retire. Yeah. Like, I want to do that type of stuff for them. Um, and all the people that supported me, Casey, like, those type of people that have been integral and in just yeah. getting me to where I am. Like, I want to, you know, it's hard to pay it all back. Yeah. Um, so being able to just do it for them. And then um, the other one would be, so I'm um, Richard the third. Yeah. I'm just carrying on to like the namesake. Yeah. It's something that like, I never got to meet my grandfather. Mm -hmm. um, heard so many stories about him. Um, 
and just being able to carry on that namesake is something that it's meant a lot to me. Like yeah. I, I never put like McStorley the third on my jersey or anything, just because yeah. like I'm Trace because I'm the third. Yeah, and that's that's where Trace comes from, and so being able just to carry oh, on, cool. that, being able to carry on that namesake is yeah. something that. Like not a lot of people know me as Richard, but like yeah, I, I don't know that. I carry, yeah, I carry that with me, and I, I want to carry that name as far as I can. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, you've done a good job so far, so Try keep, keep it up, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, uh, I appreciate you doing this, man. Yeah, no, I know it's been like an hour and a half, but I, we just time flies. When yeah, we're no, just talking. just talking, I know. shooting it around. But I'm, I'm glad you're in Arizona, time. man. I'm glad you're in Scottsdale. I know. We'll have to check out some of those more Scottsdale restaurants. Yeah, I'll show you around. I know you got the nice ones. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, I appreciate, it, bro. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys watching that whole episode with Trace McSorley. Got to talk to Trace about a lot of things he probably hasn't talked a whole lot about before. His legendary Penn State career, life off the field, his time with the Ravens, the Cardinals. It was a great conversation. Appreciate Trace for doing it. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, comment, blow this thing up. Need you sharing it with everyone you know to help me keep building this podcast. See you guys next time.